Okay. Thanks everybody for being here, or being online. Um, welcome everyone to our um, Big Game Projects Habitat Council meeting uh, for the Bureau of Wildlife Resources. Um, I'm Eric Edgley, the Habitat Section Chief for the Division, and as such, I'm the Chair of the Council. Um, let's do some quick introductions before we get going. Um, Starting with Tyler. I'm the Office of Watershed Program Director for DNR. Colby Jones, Wildlife Section Chief. Angie Wanacott, representing Waterfowl. Lisa Graham, and Habitat Office Assistant. Randy Hutchison, representing Upland. Craig Walker, Assistant Chief of Fisheries, uh, Quad Section, DWR. Okay. Um, online, see Ben Allen. Yeah, Benjamin Allen. Habitat Council, Sport Fish Representative. All right, and Steve, are you on with us? Yeah, Steve Sorensen, Big Game Rep. Awesome, glad glad you, you could join us today. Um, I'm glad to have every, that everybody's on uh, for the council today. Um, Allison, you wanna tell us who you are? Hi, Allison Whitaker, Division of Wildlife um, Habitat Conservation Program Biologist. Danny Summers, Assistant Section Chief for Habitat. Okay, Daniel. Daniel Eddington, I'm the Habitat Conservation Coordinator. Okay, great. So, yeah, thanks to to these guys and, and Lisa for all of the logistics support and getting all this put together. Um, I really appreciate that. Um, so, just a few things before we jump into stuff here. Um, we also want to. I need to thank the AV crew for all their help. Um, this is being streamed on YouTube. So just keep that in mind. Kobe. <laughs> We're just having fun. Never happens. <laughs> um, remind everybody here in the room, there's drinks in the cooler, there's snacks over there. Jump up anytime or grab anything you need. We will be taking some breaks too. And so um so a couple of other things that I need to mention here um, on in front of you. Um, there is a list that Daniel has created of other projects. And Daniel, do you want to talk about what this list is and why we're looking at it? Yeah. So as part of the Habitat Council um, process, um, any projects that kind of go through the sportsman group meeting, we just had that meeting on Tuesday, April 4th. Um, we like to have those projects reviewed by either the WRI process or through the Habitat Council process. So instead of having those projects presented here, these are projects that were fully funded by the sportsman groups on our Tuesday meeting. So I just wanna give you that list, look it over. If you have any questions or concern about any of those projects, bring it up to our next budget meeting on April 19th. Um, really it's just more informative type process here. These were fully funded. We normally would have them presented here, but we're not going to present them. We'll just do a kind of a final vote for them um, on April 19th. So we don't have to waste your time listening to projects that you're not going to actually put money on. So. Or might have already heard about it. But they're good projects. Projects are awesome. Projects. Grateful that it's working to put money on them. So just we won't have to put any money on those projects. I, I do have a question on the, what is it, 6626, the resource analysis tool? Would we be putting some Habitat Council funds towards that one? No, currently right now, no. Yeah, but uh, we've got enough funding from sports groups to just handle the... I think the other part of the money being requested right now is PR money. No, ESM money. ESM money, correct. Yeah. Probably if you'd rather have us review it for have that council money in it to I think that's one that I'd out. like to throw it, it it would it would help but we've had a lot of requests for ICP this year and so that might that might help a bit that just that let's, let's throw that one on for for next time and, and I want to make sure that one gets funded so I mean I guess that's what I'm saying is it, it it's uh it's important to us either way but it would be nice to maybe split that okay Okay, we'll do that. Um, 
Okay, so the other thing I want to mention for jump in is even besides these, these are these are just projects that have been funded through the ECG meeting that we had on Tuesday. There are several other larger projects, even bigger projects that have been funded through WRI that are big gaming projects, really important projects um, that you won't see because they're already fully funded and they're big ones. And so Daniel, maybe give us an idea of what those are. And maybe just before I jump into that, I'll just say the Sportsman Group money, they allocated 3.9 million on projects on Tuesday, which was awesome. Just kind of give you an update on what happened there. So a lot of the projects you'll see today, um, some of them were partially funded by some of those groups. The other thing I kind of want to mention, what Eric's kind of talking about here is, so the uh, UNA Watch That Catch National Forest put in for a large grant uh, this year, which was infrastructure bill money. They got that. Um, so they got almost 16 million and they fully funded um, several WRI projects. And so, um, essentially, we have not brought them um, through like even the sportsman meeting or habitat council meeting, but a lot of more high elevation, you know, projects for deer and elk. Um, you will see two of them today, uh, the Parley's Canyon and Stansbury Mountain. They've got a, a small portion that they're still asking funding for, um, but there's six of them that are 100% fully funded. Um, one is 6515 Upper Provo. Um, another one is 6520 Strawberry Ridge. Um, another one, 6520 Bear River Watershed, 6564 Mill Creek, which is uh, just here inside off the Wasatch Front, um, 6561 Anadarko, and 6521 Near Lake Highway. And that totals right there almost $10.7 million that they put on projects. And that's fully funded, so we're not going to be asking for any money. I just want to highlight that, you know, there's some of these high elevation projects that Forest Service has got money. They're going to be funded through WRI. A lot of that money is going to be funneled through us. Uh, help put seed contracting services on the ground for them. But I uh, just want to highlight that there's a lot of those projects that you're not going to hear, but uh, they are on the database if you want to go review them more. Um, but anyway, it's awesome to see that they got quite a bit of money and put it on the ground. So can I ask a quick question yeah. on that? So I may have misunderstood. So uh, some of these projects we did look at, because there's some larger ones. Uh, was there some money uh, contributed to those as well that there, we have looked at? There's two of them. Uh, Parley's Canyon is on this agenda, as well as Stansbury Mountain. Okay. They put uh, money on, but still need some additional money. So we'll hear those projects today. The other six you won't hear on the agenda. Daniel, can we, um, to like, just in, in talking about the, the conservation grant funding meeting, just and I know that you're aware of this, and the habitat section made a call to allow us to expand that meeting, which was super cool. We had uh, a private business in King's Camel join yeah. and, and donate a bunch of money, you know, and, and that's like, that's that's profits, that's their money. And then the CDMU Association also joined to um, donate money from, from their members to projects statewide, not on CWMUs, but just on projects they thought were valuable to wildlife and support. Uh, the division of wildlife and, and habitat projects and that's it's unprecedented but it's it's really neat to see this you know we we started with this little thing years and years ago 708 about tyler and it should it keeps growing and growing and growing to where we have more and more partners and now to see private entities come in and say hey we like what you're doing we want to help like that's that's pretty cool yeah this was also yeah really cool. king's, king's camel yeah. brought forty two thousand five hundred. Nice. And the CWMU Association brought 10,000. So that's awesome. You know, it's, yeah. it's that's, and I can see that growing and growing, and getting more partners. So it's just, it's neat. It's neat. Okay. All right. Any questions about about that and how, how this funding works? There's just, like, there's already some other really good, awesome projects that, that could have come through the council, but they're already funded. So we're just going to, you know, move on and 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 work on these other projects. And so, just want to make sure we highlight that, that that there's a lot of other stuff out there too that is already funded. We don't need to hear here. So, um, okay. Um, <clears throat> so, Daniel, then do we to still talk about anything about the April nineteenth meeting and what to be prepared for besides what you were talking about with ECP? Sure. Um, 
So April 19th meeting is our final budget meeting. And it's only half a day too, so. Yeah, only half a day. One. Allison has put together the spreadsheet, the, uh, the Google Doc that you should all be shared with. So you can see um, all the projects as of today are on that spreadsheet. So you'll be able to see the total amounts for each of your respective uh, entities. So um, I guess kind of probably most of them are over budget, which is fine. Um, we'll just want to maybe come, and Alice and I and Eric will do some tweaking, looking at some of those projects, seems maybe some ways to move money around, just bring those numbers down. But I'd also ask each of you guys just to take a look at those and start looking at projects that, you know, ways to maybe bring those down a little bit if they're dollar amounts we want to reduce on certain projects or projects we want to put like on the contingency list. We do that every year as well. We're, we won't fund them, but for some reason, additional money comes available. We could pull them up into the funded category, but you know, maybe have kind of a list of what projects you want to see for sure funded. Maybe ones that, you know, if we don't have enough money, we need to pull off and throw onto the contingency list. So, um, so, okay, so there's a lot because I actually looked at it the other day. There's a lot of red. Mm -hmm. There is. Um, and that's before this meeting. Yep. So yep. there's going to be some trimming Absolutely. Uh, involved this year. Do you want to bring it up? And yeah. I can explain some of my colleagues. And Eric, we're not <clears throat> authorized to go into the red at all this year. Correct. And now we're like 125 percent. Yeah. Okay. So I'll just go back over to the uh, yes. Yeah, so we can see the ranking. So what I've done, um, just to kind of help maybe you guys see what is going to get additional funding from WRI, um, I've highlighted the uh, projects that are low or medium. So they potentially may not get additional funding. Um, so those that maybe be the ones to consider either first cut or to fully fund, um, depending on obviously what it's, you know, how much is there. But Well, you're right there on that slide. Can I ask you a quick question? Because I'm not certain on how the regional ranking, mm -hmm. the higher that number is, the higher the ranking is for that project. Is that correct? Or is correct. it the opposite of that? That's the score. That okay, so what's the highest number? What what's the range for 170 was total 170 okay yeah. um so and then and then in the region rank in the where it's actually the number um we are kind of estimating that we'll get down through about 140s and so anything below that i highlighted up as well that it may potentially not make the list even though it is a high ranked project so um, anyway, that's just there in case you need some additional information as you're reviewing and, and, and uh, prioritizing for your species. So you'll, you'll see in that ranking uh, that it's important to know that that ranking is a watershed restoration initiatives program ranking. It's not a Habitat Council ranking. We just use that to kind of go by what people in the region including partners thought of those projects to see that there's a lot of them that don't have a ranking those didn't go through the wri process so just know that so we, we evaluate those as a council just based on the merits of, of that project and that they didn't look for your ranking essentially or did your ranking is that a good way to characterize that yeah, i mean it's what it is it's a measurement of how likely it is to get other partner funding yeah. so like Al said, we've just kind of done this long enough that we can kind of see where the line is. Right now, we think the line's at about 100 or 140. So anything below 140 is less likely to get WRI funding. But we don't know until we actually go through the process of plugging. So if it, it doesn't rank as well, but it's still a good project, especially in the, the, the eyes of the council, that those are ones that we would want to probably try to use more of our money to, to get them to go. And then if you scroll over just a little bit further, um, so you can see the Habitat Council request column. Um, okay, so um, the columns that are zeroed out and are green, those are projects that um, we had originally had on our list for funding, but the, at the meeting on Tuesday, they were fully funded. So you can just see which ones 
uh, we don't we no longer need to add funding to. So I'm taking those out of the calculation. Okay. Hopefully that's not too confusing. <laughs> it's, a, it's a big machine. Right. And, right. and the dollar amounts reflected for each category mm -hmm. are with the new law that passed. Mm -hmm. Correct. Right. Yes. So right there that I have highlighted, that's our available amount right now that we have to allocate the projects. And four point two million is what's currently being requested. And then it's just broken down by each category here for big game, up on game, waterfowl, and sport fish. So these are the amounts that we're currently over. The spreadsheet truly You've done a good job putting it together. It's very self-explanatory. Well, and, and Allison and, and Daniel have worked really hard to make it as least confusing as possible, but it's it's really complex. So and I would I would make a recommendation for you guys if you want to download a copy of it into Excel, then that way all the formulas are there and you can kind of play around with it. Say, you know, if we don't fund this one and we we maybe don't fund this one and kind of look and see what happens in your category. That makes kind of the, the process of reviewing go a lot faster and a lot easier. Okay. Just don't mess with Alice's expression. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't I don't, I don't think they can. Yeah, <laughs> <right>. <laughs> okay. Um, and then the next one is the Okay. So with that, we're going to, we're going to move ahead uh, unless there's any lingering questions, but we need to get moving. Like I say, we got 36 projects. So, so let's get started on them. So before, as, before we start, we need to approve our minutes from March 16th, which basically we're approving the voting that occurred there. Um, and so I'll need a motion for that. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Okay. 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 A motion from Randy to approve, a second from Tyler. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Any opposed say no. Okay, the motion passes. We're Okay, we're going to jump right into Northern Region projects, and uh, I'll remind our presenters to introduce yourself. And we're going to just like be pushing you at, when you hit like five minutes. It's like, okay, it's time to move on. So, so trim your presentations. <laughs> Go ahead, sixty-four seventy-four Mahogany Ridge Go ahead. All right, so Mahogany Ridge. I'm sorry, Shane Hill. Northern Region Conservation Stylist. Um, Mahogany Ridge, Old Hall, Phase 2 project is our number one uh, year old project in the region. It is a combination of Old Hall and Office Scanner and Office Shed Spray. Um, we did a project last year, similarly it's nearby, and it expanded to benefit deer, elk, and sage grouse. This is the sage grouse left them during the fall. Um, so So here's some of the yellow with your waffle scatters that is focused on phase two juniper and random sage grape slip. And then I want to focus on this phase three thicker juniper is going to be like blue here. Up here in the purple, among thin junipers around mahogany that are associated with this mahogany spread and right there. Two hundred acres for full hog and uh, twelve hundred acres for the scatter. So, so break down of what it's not only is it your full ridge of grass and forbs, it's a lot less less grass than the deer. And as well as that in the rock creek. Okay. 
actually the, the usage of the wildlife and the character in the way, you know, it's different like that, but given the large cost of being here, you need to be able to mitigate that a little bit by opening the ground. Steve says talk louder, Shane. Okay. Um, since she only did her food for this, this type of map, this is all the presentations at the sea election, which is Delphi's blue, I believe. Did you know your top? Yeah, this is the area. The treatment area is largely around right here. I'm a fan of the last one. Okay. And uh, just to plug like, this one and really give us a good idea of what, how, how much we need to do more in the range of security, a lot of nuisance calls, a lot of mortality. And this truck project will target that. Juniper removal and seeding species in there. <laughs> we'll go back to the go back to the W we're running. Maybe it's maybe pictures. Significant amount from unfortunate groups like yesterday, the other day, and but still need quite a bit more for the bull hog and the largest portion of the project. Yeah. Okay, questions? Shane, you mentioned that NEPA was completed. When was it completed and what's the duration for the existing? I'm, I'm not sure exactly when it was completed because it was done before my, my time, but we, it, we are clear um, according to the Forest Service to to work as well as our, our, our clearance from the state. We're clear to, to do work in this in the current project area. I know there's usually a five year window. I'm just trying to figure out where they're at in that. I, I could ask. I don't. I don't know if there's a, a limit when when we need to get it all done by. So oh, that's a good question. Figure that out. Any other questions for? Okay. Love this project. Thank you. I think the goal with this one, just trying to remember from the sports meeting, it's low enough range. I don't think it, it'll get funding for the bull hunt. I think we were trying to get the lop and scatter, which was 176,000. Sports was good to put about 150 on it. So I I think we need to bump that 20 up to like 25, 27, something like that, maybe 27. Is that enough to make a difference? Just looking at what she wanted, what she wanted for the lot of scatter, she needs 176, 550. And I think yesterday was 100, or Tuesday was 147. I mean, it's it's all estimates with the 115 acre. So, so I'm understanding you correctly, Tyler. They, they won't. They probably won't get to the bull hog portion this year. No, I don't think they've got funding for it. It's, I think the score was too low. Okay, so I'll increase it to twenty-seven thousand. I'll make that a motion. 
to approve it for funding consideration at twenty-seven thousand. Okay. Any other questions? Please? And I won't argue against it, but could I see the breakdown? Once you're done with that, I can't remember what the breakdown is on this. Go ahead, Dan. It's in there. Yeah, that's not what it was <laughs> before. It's not there. Oh. That's right. It was that's, at 100% like big game. Sweet. It was 100% big game. <laughs> it's amazing that it let me put that in there without it. There it is. Okay, so we have a motion to approve at 27. I, I got I to gotta tell you guys, this, this is not a 100% big game. There is a ton of birds in there, a ton of rabbits, a ton of turkeys. Um, it butts right up against a lot of sage grouse habitat. I've seen sage grouse on the other side of the road of this project. I don't know why it would be a 100% big game. Because the birds spend most of their time on the flats over on that flat, so there's only one lek within a few miles of this. But I wouldn't object to putting a small amount of buffalo on it, because I like this project. And, and given the changes, if we can't do the bull hog, it is probably more of a game, big game in my opinion. Okay, what, what percentage? Uh, 25. 25. Okay. I, I would volunteer 10% on it. I, I'm going to get bled to death this whole meeting. All these projects have 10%, and I don't have any money because it all got taken away. That's a stab, not a, anybody here. Okay, I'll amend my motion then to make it 90 big game, 10% up on. Okay. We have an amended motion from Tyler. I second 27,000, and we have a second uh, from Kobe. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Say no. Okay. You know, I I um I want to make sure that if the bullhog doesn't get funded this year, that we see it back again next year. And will we? Figure out how to get more red, uh, riparian like water benefit in this sort of project. There's already a lot of beavers there, so there's not a lot of work we need to do in the street to get that water benefit the points and isn't this wasn't a lot of this spot with federal land could we get some um uh, Pippin some money on it because we don't have any of it on it this year yeah i mean we'll we'll plug in Pippin robertson dollars to wr projects but like i said those will go to the higher rent projects yeah no i didn't realize that i was just thinking for next year but. make sure that you work with the wildlife section as they rewrite the the unit plan for elk this year as well. And that might be a spot to identify it to make sure that it's something we want to get done. Okay. All right. Thanks, Shane. Uh, we're going to move on to Project 1695 North Grouse Creek Habitat Restoration. Okay. All right. This one is our only um, range when type treatment in box elder county this year on blm it is a mixture of lock and scatter and bull hog treatments on some previously treated area as well as some additional areas that are going to be treated um, it is our set number two for deer in in the in the region and you're probably not explaining what you're talking about when, you, when we're throwing those numbers out. Okay, I'm sorry. The group knows what we did there. Do you want to explain? Yeah. So on top of you have the, the WRI rank. Um, every year we also send all the projects to uh, the regions and ask the habitat section and the wildlife section to rank the projects according to species. So for deer, elk, pronghorn, moose, bison, um, turkeys, they're going to give them a score of one to however many projects they got. And so um, we kind of have those two different scores. So you'll have the WRI score, but you can also see from the region what they would rank, you know, whatever project is their number one deer project or their number 10 deer project. They kind of just take a stab at it from their own uh, region. So 
Um, we have those rankings. I don't think we've provided them anywhere on the spreadsheet, correct? Mm -hmm. So anyway, that's kind of what they're talking about when they say that. We we do provide that to the sportsman groups at that meeting. They do see those rankings um, just so they can see which projects are the region is considering the best gear project or the best health project or so forth. So that's what that ranking is. And it's a number two gear project. Thank you. And um, so in 2018, I believe the Goose Creek fire went through this area and the BLM identified that uh, the juniper encroachment was a large factor in the size of that fire. So they're continuing treatment in areas to do some fire mitigation to avoid catastrophic fires in the area again. Uh, pretty straightforward, we want to go through and lop and scatter in areas where phase one and two juniper stands and do some whole hog in the thicker stands. Breakdown of the budget. Um, there is a significant portion funded through BLM for this. Keep that one short. Okay, any questions on this one? Shane, in your comments, you mentioned feathering and some other things. Did you ever get anything more than a we're always open to discussing modifying our yeah design. we 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 do that that was mainly for is a opinion j potential listing for endangered species so we're just trying to get get ahead of that and have meetings but yeah we are uh, working with the uh, all right steve you have a question yeah, Shane, you got this listed as a sage grouse project. I thought I seen on there on one of the earlier slides, and but it, once again, it's a hundred percent big game. I, I'm not going to give any on this one. I thank the heavens for the fire that happened out there a couple years ago, that opened up a ton of land for um, checkers and sage grouse. Um, I don't have any money. And I'll just say this about the sage grouse. You know, we've, I know, I mean, most of these percentages are made up by Allison. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so we've kind of ignored the sage grouse because almost every big game every project has, has sage grouse on it. And we would, we would really kill the upward budget if we included sage grouse. So that's just the way that Allison's built a lot of these. But of course, we can discuss each and every project if you'd like. Okay. So I'll move to accept it. I'll second. Okay. We have a motion to approve the project uh, from Randy and a second from Tyler. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Okay. Thank motion you. passes. Thanks, Shane. Okay, next project, uh, 6766 Farm Conveyed, Salt Creek, WMA, Destrian Bridges. Do we know who's going to? No, so I'm thinking from that I brought up, but I am not sure that they are on the invite. Let's maybe circle back to that one. Yeah. And we'll see if we can get them online. Okay, we'll, we'll pass on this one for now. But, uh, maybe, yeah, discuss why it's on here. Point two. Okay, we're going to move on to the next one. Uh, 6545 Weaver, Weaver River Watershed Restoration and Forest Resilience at Y24. Who's presenting this one? I see Shane, where you, where you, Daniel, where you going to present the next one? Oh, I didn't see that that Weaver, on the Weaver River. Yeah, I can. Okay, so I didn't see that one on the. Oh, it's down that block. Okay. All right. So this is a large um, collaboration with the uh, between that was proposed by the this, by Summit County, but there's a lot of partners in this. this is for the Forest Service and some a lot of private landowners. 
Um, a big focus on this one is improving uh, watershed health in the headwaters of the Eagle River through uh, BDAs, through beaver dam analogs, and slowing the keeping water on the land a little longer, and reducing erosion, and, and increasing fire resiliency. There's some thinning uh, of forest areas. And uh, if you go to the, the pictures, that kind of show the areas that they're going to be treating. Again, it's I'll keep it short. It's the going in and through doing some aspen regeneration projects and, and stream restoration and go through. This, is, this one's kind of a cool project that the, the counties organized the group of, of, of both or, um, agencies and private landowners to kind of identify areas of need. Should be some pretty uh, stark picture of Browns Creek. So a lot of a lot of the work would be in stream structures, reducing erosion and holding water to the back. Any questions? I just whispered to Eric that uh, I didn't see any habitat council associated with this project. It was all WRI. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. And I, I had suggested putting 50,000. That's a 90 10 split. But apparently I didn't put it in the database. Sorry about that, guys. 90 10 as in. 90% uh, big game, 10% not game, small game. And this project is a precursor to uh, some more projects coming down in the pipeline as they requested money for to get NEPA done in the area to do more work, more thinning and, uh, on the Forest Service in the same area. So just to try to spread the joy a little bit, is there impact? I mean, this is all water project. What is any impact on sport fish or non-sport fish? Um, a lot of the areas they're working on, there kind of, there aren't any currently, but they'll start somewhere to, well, it will prove water quality in the Weaver River, water quantity potential for um, in the hottest season part of the year by working in the headwaters and slowing the water down will should in increase the, the watershed health throughout the whole year. Okay. Oh. So is that fifty thousand? Is that fifty thousand needed to get up to budget on this? No, it's going to need a lot more money. But it's a high rank project; it will get funded. This is this is the perfect example of what WRA is looking for: these big groups of diverse partnerships that are working across the, the watershed. And I, this one's just getting started. This is going to be a big push for Summit County and this whole group. No, and I like the project. I remember reading it. And just, it's a great project. Yeah, it even has it even has money through Congressman Blake's office, and, and they've gotten a bunch of other funding partners. You know, so I think it's a great project. I'm looking forward to seeing some the, the unfortunate things that kind of falls in the pocket right there on the UNO one such cash that didn't get this this. Uh, national funding, so a lot of it's going to fall on WRI and this council of sportsman's groups. If we want to see work done, especially in the forest areas, where it definitely needs it. Um, so, with that, I'll I'll make the motion to approve it. And I'll second it. Okay. Any other questions on that before we on that? Okay. Uh, we have a motion from Tyler and a second from Randy. All in favor, say aye. 
Any opposed? Say no. Okay. Passes. All right. Thanks again. Thanks, Shane. Okay, we're going to move to some of our Southeast Region projects now. Uh, number 6498, Salina Creek, Phase 5. Hello, I'm Kim Hansen. I'm the Habitat Program Manager in the Southeast Region. I'll be presenting some projects today. So, Salina Creek is on the south of Nantai. It's kind of on the border of the southeastern and the southern regions. And this phase of the project will be primarily treating uh, our habitats with Mastication as well as prescribed fire. Uh, some of the benefits will be to primarily big game uh, deer, elk, and moose that are going to benefit from setting back. To uh, sorry, guys, I can't hear the people that are presenting very well. I don't know if they're standing away from the mic. I can't see that video, but I can't hear. Stand over by this mic. There you go. Is that better, Steve? That's, that sounds better right there. Yes, thank you. Okay. Um, yeah, so I was just saying that the primary species that are going to be benefiting from this project are going to be moose, deer, and elk that are going to benefit from resetting some of those vegetation communities back to an earlier stage and providing more forage. We also asked for 10% uh, for upland game. Uh, this project is going to benefit turkeys primarily, but also turkey grouse and ruffed grouse um, just by creating vegetation mosaics in those communities and providing more vegetation. Um, the, the turkey will primarily be benefited from the Ponderosa community and trying to maintain that community in an earlier seral stage. Um, and then also there is claim to a great sage grass on this project. Um, they're going to try and create some fuel breaks that'll hopefully keep fire out of some of the sage brush areas. So from Habitat Council, I think we're asking for $50,000 with a 9 to 10 split on that. How have the other phases come? This is phase three. Right? This is phase five. Is this five? Yeah. Okay. So I, don't, I forgot we were reading about No, you're I'm good. Sure I yeah, no, I think this has been a really successful project. I know our big game biologist in that area has been really happy with what he's been seeing. And they, they, like I said, this phase is, I think, primarily in the southeastern region, but the phases have gone between the southeastern and the southern regions. And yeah, they've been looking pretty good. I'll just say this one about this. Um, this is this is a, a fire and fuel shop in the Forest Service down there um, out of the Richville office that's very highly functioning. They're the ones that are doing the Monroe Mountain burns. And Salina Creek is another example of their fine work. And this is one of those that kind of falls in another donut area. It's not in the shared stewardship area. So a lot of the responsibility falls to this council that we're going to help fund it, but it's a good project. Is it what's the ranking? Is it highly ranked? Yeah, I ranked and I think it's like a 146 or something like that. Number three project out of the region, the third highest project out of all the WR ranking 1.1 million and they're asking 50 for this. All right, I'll make a motion to approve it. Okay, we have a motion from Randy. Second. We have a second from Angie. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say no. All right, the motion passes. Next project, West Emory County Watershed Restoration. Yeah, so West Emory Watershed Restoration, it probably didn't rank quite as well in the WRI process, so um, this one will need funding, I think, if, <laughs> if we're going to get this project going. <clears throat> um, most of the project is a 2,000 acre prescribed fire in the Pines area. And then also there's some mastication request in the Mahogany Point area. The mastication uh, is in winter range. It's going to primarily benefit deer and elk and then also sage grass in that area. Um, one of the big components of that mastication is it kind of keeps, the hope is to keep those wildlife up on the benches and out of the communities below in uh, Castle Dale. And Orangeville um, to try and keep them out of ag fields. So trying to keep them up on the benches. Can, can you zoom in a little on the shape pile on this one? Yeah, so most of the money we're asking for um, is to help with some of the prescribed fire on in those Ponderosa areas. Um, 
this project is ranked number one in the region for deer and elk, um, even though it was lower ranked in the WRI process. The South Manti is one of our um, biggest units that we're trying to benefit big game. Uh, we've seen some lower numbers in that area and that's our most like popular hunting unit in terms of permits that we're able to give out to the public. So it's a really critical area for the hunting public just because of the number of permits that are put on the Manti um, and the South Manti has seen some declines in population. So that's why it's ranked number one for here in Elk. Um, and then also, as I mentioned, greater sage grouse in this project. Uh, we are asking 40,000 from Habitat Council and all of that would request is from Big Game. All right, any questions on this one? No, it's part of the project. Okay. Do we have a motion on this one then? I'll make a motion. Okay. I'll second it. Okay, a motion from Kobe and a second from Steve. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. All right, motion passes. Okay, next project, 6617 Eastern LaSalle's Watershed Restoration. So the Eastern LaSalle's is a large project, multi-agency. It's one of our watershed scale projects that we've been working on um, on the LaSalle Mountains. Uh, primary benefits to deer and elk. It's mostly winter range out here. Um, we've recently done a collar, some collaring out here to see how the animals are moving between uh, both the LaSalle unit and the Abajos and then the interaction that those animals are having with Colorado as well. Um, so a lot of different habitat treatments primarily this year is going to be uh, pinion juniper um, and then some oak mastication as well kind of as we're getting into those transition ranges. The BLM is bringing a large portion of the funding to this project this year. Uh, we do have some benefits to turkey band-tailed pigeons and cottontail. Um, it was the number two project for turkey in the region. Um, and just like to mention, although band-tailed pigeons primarily use mature stands of oak, we think that a lot of the oak on the LaSalle's is kind of a same age class. And so providing some diversity will benefit those, those birds long term. Um, like I said, there's several different phases of this project, or not phases, but several different components across different land ownership types. Um, we're asking from Habitat Council, 50,000, 85 big game, 10% upland game, and 5% non game. Okay, any questions on this one? Just an observation, you guys have some great projects going. I, I loved reading through you guys' projects. And this is a, a big one, you know, it's a $6.5 million project overall. Um, yeah, it's our biggest project. <laughs> but at least the BLM's bringing a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah, um, one thing on this project I failed to mention, uh, there's a lot of Scylla lands that are obviously encompassed in some of these BLM lands and where the BLM is bringing so much funding to this project. Um, we just have asked money from kind of our other groups to help treat those civil lands just for cost benefit. It makes more sense to treat those civil lands while the BLM is treating their lands as well. So helping with some additional seed where needed and contract work for the civil lands adjacent to the BLM. I'm glad you brought that up because this is a question for me to learn something. I, now, there's a handful of projects where I saw sibling funds actually being used, usually as trade and kind. Usually they're doing the, the archaeology work. I don't see it very often, though. Why is there not? A, to me, it doesn't seem like there's very much money coming from SIPLA on anything I've seen. You're very <laughs> I, I think it's simple. It's that that's not their mission. Their mission isn't to maintain healthy wildlife habitats. Their mission is to leverage their land to generate funds for school kids. And so, so uh, they have the best we've been able to get out of them over the last decade and a half is sage grouse money. They're pretty keen on keeping the sage grouse from being listed. So we'll get a couple hundred thousand a year out of them for sage grouse projects. They do 
come up with some fire rehab money when their land's burned. But yeah, stuff like this, it's just not, it's not like Chloe said, it's not their mission. So you're probably thinking, well, why are we funding these projects that we sell the property? That well, no, I, I, I get that yeah, part okay. actually, but I was just hoping and I understand yeah. their mission. And that, that's the reason why. Yeah, yeah. 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 There, there's always an ask out there for more money. Yeah. Well, the but, truth is, even the even the even the sagebrush money is not given to. It's not altruistic. It's because oh, it's if, if sagebrush is listed, it keeps then them. it changes the ability to leverage their land. For, and that's fine. We all have different. We all have different. Um, you know, division of wildlife, we, we manage for wildlife, not multiple use a lot of times. So this yeah. stretches us, you know, having healthy landscapes benefits everyone. So I, uh, I, I can recognize the voice presenting. I don't know the name, but I apologize. Um, you mentioned that uh, this was high priority for a lot of your helping game. Um, is that split? good in your eyes fair or yeah i think just in terms of acreage the primary benefits are going to be the big game um there's going to be smaller pockets where the upland game are benefited so i think that's a fair split <clears throat> thank you and i'll, I'll grab that non-game guys you know i always pick that up for you <laughs> <laughs> thanks steve <laughs> all right do we have a motion on this one i'll, I'll, I'll make the motion Okay. okay, we have a motion from Steve, and we have a second from Randy. Thank you. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say no. Okay, motion carries. All right, moving right along, 6508 Upper Price River Watershed. The new Miller Creek, right? <laughs> yeah, the new Miller Creek. Okay. Um, so this project is kind of spread out, as you can see, all along kind of that band of mountain habitats that we have around Price, but this is another watershed scale project that we have. Um, it'll be treating a diversity of habitats. There'll be a lot of aspen work, and then a lot of this project is actually preparation for more aspen work to come in the future. Those big sections that you can see right there, um, those are all on our wildlife management area. We're gonna try and restore some aspen in those communities, so um, this is kind of writing the burn plan and getting that prepared to do that. Um, there's also those little pockets um, along Lower Fish Creek on the south side. That's more aspen regeneration treatment. We've been doing that for a few years. Um, so continuing that project. There is some work in Mud Creek and some of the tri tributaries to Schofield. So those are primarily going to benefit Colorado River cutthroat trout by diversifying the habitats um, that are in those streams and trying to reduce the phosphorus loading that's going into Schofield Reservoir. Um, and then the other kind of portion is in Emma Park. Um, we'll be doing a lot of wet metal restoration using uh, Z-Dike type structures. We'll actually be having a training out there this spring. Um, so we've done a little bit of that already to try and reduce head cutting and try and bring the water table up in that area, primarily for grouse, but also to benefit other species. And then the other section of this is in Range Creek, um, which is kind of lower elevation. Um, it's going to be tamarisk brush olive removal to try and restore that riparian area and maintain the cottonwoods that are existing in that habitat. Um, so that Range Creek stuff is primarily going to benefit uh, big game, but also turkey and California quail. Then the aspen habitats are going to be benefiting our big game species, um, deer and elk primarily, as well as some of our forest grouse, so dusky grouse and ruffed grouse, um, even though each of those species kind of prefer different things, those dusky grouse really use those um, edge habitats, and then their brood rearing also is really relies on those new aspen habitat areas and the orbs and insects that come into those. So um, for this project, we're asking for $42,000. Um, it's kind of a big split between everyone, 70% uh, big game, 10% upland game, 5% sport fish, and then 5% non-game wildlife and 5% non-game fish. So you have blue head soccer listed on there, and that's coming from Range Creek, correct? Yes. 
Texas pork this year. Not sport this year in Scopey. We did. We have cutthroat in Rage Creek too. Yeah, it's not big. But the eutrophication of Scofield is definitely that's key for this. Yeah. I'll move to approve. I'll do, let's see if there's any questions first. Okay. <laughs> I'll second if there's no questions. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are taking this moving right along. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have a motion from Craig to approve. We have a second from Tyler. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Say no. All right. Motion carries. All right. Next project, the Bible Mountains. 6602. So uh, the Bible Mountains is primarily going to be um, some prescribed fire in Ponderosa community and then some mastication in the oak and PJ communities. So Mormon pastures, that stuff that you'll see on the top for you guys, the left-hand side of the map. Um, so that's going to be uh, yeah, maintaining that Ponderosa community and trying to remove some of the understory and restore the fire return in interval into that area. Um, and then the Baja Mountain stuff is a continuation. It's part of the shingle mill project that has been going on for a few years. We've seen a lot of success with that. The local community has actually received a lot of positive feedback from the local community on that. Um, Really good summer range and transition transition range stuff. Um, I think we're only asking twenty thousand for this from Habitat Council. I do think this one is primarily you had the breakout one hundred percent big game, but I do think this one's actually a really critical wild turkey area. Um, this is one place in the state that we have Miriam's turkeys, which we don't have a lot of in the state, and that's the only place we really have them in our region. And it's hard to come by Miriam's turkeys, so trying to provide benefits to those um, would probably make sense to do a, a little bit of upland game on this project. It was the number one turkey project in the subject? region. Um, I don't know. I know Randy doesn't have what? much money. <laughs> <laughs> you just sunk me on that one. <laughs> if, if there's a legitimate impact on that one, if, and I don't know that area. Right. So if there's a legitimate impact, yeah, we'll take it. How high is it ranked? It's the number one turkey project. And then in the region, it's probably the ranked, I can't remember where it's ranked in the region for WRI. 135. 135. So it's coming on the cusp. Steve, Rex, on the Randy, would a 50 50 split be okay? <laughs> <laughs> if, if the turkeys are eating 50% of the feed, yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> 90 10 makes yeah, sense. I was going to say 10%. There's some ducks out there, too, isn't there? Hey, 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 hey. I'm kidding. I'm just kidding. All right. Do we have a motion on this one? <laughs> I'll a motion to approve it. Oh, oh, we already got one. So we have a motion from Angie to approve. We have a second from Randy. Um, and so all in favor say aye. 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 Any, any opposed say no. Okay. Motion passes. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Rakita. <clears throat> all right. We're going to move to our northeast region projects. Now, I'm not sure. Let's see. Pat's online. Um, our first project from the northeast region is 6558 Tabby Mountain Habitat Improvement. <laughs> See who we got for that one. Pat. Oh, you see Steve's face, but he doesn't show it. He doesn't show the story online. I don't see the story online. He showed me the shorts in the photo. Oh. Okay. Yeah, Pat, we can probably go to Southern Region projects. Let, let's do that, one. if you if you wouldn't mind. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. So, okay, so we're going to move to Southern Region projects. Gary, is that okay? And hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Gary's going to stand. Gary and Stan are here. I think they can. Uh, okay. Uh, the first one for Southern Region is 6511 Yellow Jacket Monument Nolan. Okay, it's got quite the list today. 
He's on. Hopefully. Curtis, are you, are you available? Yep, I'm here. Jumping in earlier than. Yeah, that's okay. Um, Yellow Jacket Monument Knoll is a project that is uh, down in the southern region, down by the core. Oh, well, I better start by introducing myself to you guys. I'm Curtis Roundy. I'm the habitat restoration biologist in the southern region and covering the southern half of the southern region. So Yellow Jacket Monument Knoll, uh, the, the location is ad adjacent to Coral Pink Sand Dunes. So down in the winter range portion for the, the Zion deer herd and the Pontagon deer herd. And there's a couple of things going on with this project. There's a uh, harrow and seeding in an area where the sagebrush is just decadent, super tall and um, no understory. So you, you, the deer get inside of this and there's little trails that move through it, but they, they really don't spend any time in there. And we're looking to reset that to a diverse uh, habitat species uh, in that area. And then also is a mastication plan for this area with seed. Um, we've done several projects. I think this is phase eight or nine in this area of these types of projects. And so we have a lot of history with success and the seed mix that we've put together has been tested in areas directly adjacent to and has been really successful in producing the results that we're looking for. So we've done both harrow and mastication directly adjacent to these projects. And, and so both of these are tried and true tested methods that work. You also see a polygon to the west of that. One of the bottlenecks in these areas down here is getting archaeology on the shelf. So this project is also requesting the archaeology for the next phase of this project. And so that's that's where we're looking to move to in the future. But in a nutshell, there, there's some pictures of the, the work that we've done adjacent and some of the areas, what they look like now. And so it's, it's pretty heavy pinion and juniper, big, tall, thick trees that take a lot of work on mastication into things. And there is a ponderosa pine component in the upper elevation portions of this that we would look to clear the pinion and juniper out from under it and, and give it a chance to have all the resources that are there for, you know, inner space understory and ponderosa pine, leaving it there on the landscape. This is use from deer in the previous projects. Almost immediately after we go in and treat the projects, we see heavy use by the, the wildlife that call this place home. It's adjacent to uh, an area where we have bighorn sheep just off the rim and we have started noticing the closer we get to the rim the more we get those bighorn sheep coming up in and using these treatment areas as well for feed and forage so i think this one's one that's probably close enough that we would see some but not a lot of use they seem to like that that rocky rim country a little better and so it's a little bit removed from that but not out of the out of the question that they could come and utilize this area all right any questions for curtis on this project curtis this is craig um you mentioned in your water quality quantity section uh, that this is a 303D listed creek, Kanab Creek is there. Yep. Um, was there any discussion with DEQ, DWQ about using their non-point source funding for a portion of the project? I I haven't had that conversation myself personally. I, I don't know for sure if the BLM has discussed that with them at all. My gut on it is probably not, but it's not out of the question if that's something that we want to take back to them and ask them to look for that funding in the future. But for right now, I don't, I don't know that that discussion has happened. Thank you. 
Okay, any other questions on this one? All right. I will point out this is a looks like a pretty big BLM funded project. Um, 900k to the 1.5 million on this one. Um, yeah, big chunk of money there. But do we have a motion on this. I'll make the motion to approve it. I'll second. Okay, I have a motion from Tyler and a second from Randy. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Say no. Okay, motion carries. All right. Next project, uh, 6496 Locks Creek Collaborative, phase two. Is that <laughs> Thank you. Glad Campbell could get here. Sorry, we, uh, we, we moved the Southern Region projects up in the schedule a little bit. So, so we can get home tonight. Yeah, sure. Yes. Get you through all the snow. Don't mind all the blue sky stuff. <laughs> so, my name is Kendall Bagley. And with uh, Habitat Restoration Biologist out of Ridgefield. Stand up. Back on it. Talking to that. Yeah. yeah. And so today I'll be presenting the Lost Creek Collaborative Phase 2. This project is uh, put together by um, a number of agencies, mainly the, the Forest Service, the BLM, Fish and Wildlife Service, DWR, and State Trust Lands. So a lot of partners on this one. Um, this project will consist of aerial seeding and bull hogging, mastication, along with some lop and scatter pinion juniper tree, approximately about 6,000 to 70 acres. And our cost will be estimated about $418 an acre. Uh, sits on the north end of the Fish Lake mountain range, uh, south of I 70, and within phase one of the Lost Creek project, we've been able to treat approximately around 10,000 acres. Um, it's just a good overall project. We've got some funding coming from the BLM, funding also coming from U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service with Clint Weirich. So it's a great project. We've had a lot of success there. and We're under objective on our deer, our elk, on this unit on the Fish Lake. And it's a great avenue to increase some more habitat and do a lot of work with our partners. Any questions? Questions for Kendall? You know, yeah, I'm going to ask. I notice if, if my notes are right, we have 15% for up one. There's some sage droughts quite a ways away from there. But yeah, what, what other impact are you seeing? Turkeys. There's a fair amount of turkeys that'll be in Lost Creek. And uh, so we've been able to develop some of that habitat along the, the river in the first phase, doing some lock and scatter work and kind of leaving some of those cottonwoods and taking out some of the PJ. So there's quite a bit of uh, turkey habitat. And uh, I think Craig had some non-native fish in there too as well, Kelly, in the first phase. This um, says dusky gouse and rough grouse. Is it really? Yeah. Awesome. Some question. Who takes care of the non game fish? Game fish. Game fish does? Fish or fish? <laughs> and I'm not going to push the number at all, but as far as your forest grouse, is there much of this work being done up high? In the, uh, There's been a little area? bit done kind of in the, um, just a, right on the, the brink of the aspen zone. Okay, so I want to that just, so, yeah. okay, I want, that work is great. Yeah, <coughs> sweet water in some of that area, they've, been, they've done a little bit of chaining in the first phase, so okay. definitely open up some areas. Okay. Any other questions on this one? Looks like a big chunk of WRI money on this, dude. I'll, I'll make a motion to approve it. Okay, a motion from Steve. Yeah. Got a second from Angie. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Motion carries. All right. What we also learned from that is fish are fish. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that.
Okay. <laughs> okay, next project. I figured with the non game title, I might have had to pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> you can pick up fish too if you want. You just blend everything. That'd be good. <laughs> okay, Gooseberry East Phase 3. I've got that one as well. This one was put together by uh, Kelly Cornwall, Clint Weirich. And um, this is our, our third phase of the gooseberry. You can kind of see where it sits. Pretty much just barely north of the Lost Creek, um, <coughs> south of I-70, and it'll be, this will be the third phase. In the first phase, we did a lot of the cultural resource and, and some of the prep to get it ready. In the second phase, we've done a fair amount of bulldog work and chaining work in the forest, so it's worked out really well. This third, third phase will consist of more of the same, some aerial seeding, um, plop and scatter, some mastication, and also Clint Weirich, the Fish and Wildlife Service, has been an integral part. Uh, we're going to pick up some private um, as well on this one. So roughly looking to treat about 2,516 acres. Uh, we feel like we can get it done for about $251 an acre. Same uh, as far as objectives. Uh, below objective on our mule deer, our elk, and we do have a, a fair amount of turkeys in this area. A lot of recreation that kind of takes part uh, in the Greensburg area. Got some snowmobilers, ATVers. Uh, it's pretty much a main access off I I seventy uh, for a lot of people just outside of a swine across ten to twelve miles. So, um, project to take place, like I mentioned, on Forest Service and also private. Um, a lot of our partners in the past has been Mule Deer Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation, National Wild Turkey Foundation. Um, yeah, it's just a great, great project. They want to continue to do a lot of the work. Uh, the Forest Service has done a lot of work in-house, at least my DIQ, um, where it's just a Forest Service contract uh, that'll take place. They'll do a lot of the lock and scatter. Um, they've done a lot of the bullhog work in-house with their own masticators and using their own people and fuels crew for, for doing some of the work. So another great project, just another um, phase of, of the gooseberry working back to the south. You see a lot of these pictures that Daniel's gone through there. So the total cost, uh, what is it? Now? It's not 500 and yeah, Habitat Council, we're looking for 50,000. Total cost is 578,000. Uh, Fish and Wildlife Service brought 19,300 through cooperative green with the Division of Wildlife Resources. Okay, any questions? Kendall on this. What, is that, what are the splits again? And on this one? 85, 10, 85, 10, 5. We got some fish or fish in there. Okay, split here is that probably five should be for tracking should go in on this. Even though fish or fish, but just a fish or fish. Oh. Using that <laughs> council for now. Any other questions? <laughs> All right, do I Shall we change it? I mean, if, if we're using if we want to track investment, we want to reflect what we're actually doing. Yeah. Do you know what? I, I would say track it because I had this very question come up about uh, turkeys. Yep. And because in the statute it says they're supposed to track per species. So I, I would say make it accurate. Yeah, I mean, what's mentioned in the proposal is Southern Weather Side Show. You know, so. Mm -hmm. so to approve. Uh, Changing sport fish to the <laughs> splitter. Say that again. Just want to put the move to approve with the change. Does that change right now? Yeah. It's out. Okay. okay. And I'll move to approve the project. Oh, I think we're going to count Kobe's motion is. is, is the motion. Okay, sweet. Okay, I'll second. second. Yeah. Just real quick. It's okay. Sorry. Okay, you have a question. Go ahead. Just, I don't know if I'll split it one more time, but there are sport fish as well. Bottom of the cutthroat trout are involved. Well, is it right in your proposal? It's <laughs> is it in there? Because I checked before I spoke up. So. It's, it's listed as species, but it's not an objective, is it? Uh, Craig does a fairly good job, seriously. <laughs> 
Okay, so it's in the okay. uh, Toby, any plan to amend your motion? Yeah, split the split. Okay. 2.5. And then approve. <laughs> okay, we can have I get a, a second on that? Second. From Kobe to approve <laughs> splitting fish 2.5 to 3.5. I will second that. Oh. We have lots of seconds. <laughs> I'm going to accept Craig. Thank you. Craig it's second. a fish so, Okay. So the motion is from Kobe to approve. The second is from Craig. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Any, of, any, of those, guys. any opposed say no. Okay. And as a, a note to that, the database does not allow me to do 2.5. So I did 3% 3, 3 sport fish, 2% uh, non game <laughs> <laughs> I withdraw the motion. <laughs> no, uh, no, time just kidding, just kidding. Time out. <laughs> Okay, no, we are moving on. It's done. <laughs> it's in the books. It's done. Okay, next project 6563 Thousand Lakes Habitat Improvement Phase 3. <laughs> Jim Lamb. Howdy, I'm here. How are you doing? I have man? to show you my cubicle. Uh, That's nice. Good, good day at work. Cubicle today. I'm What's on the parking lot helping Morgan. What's that blue Pardon stuff me? above? What's that blue stuff That's above blue. your head? All right, we have a ton of it down here. Okay. We're finally it's getting some. Too. Go ahead. <laughs> All right, 6563, six, Thousand Lakes Mountain. This is a lop and scatter project, 1,220 acres worth. It's on Forest Service property. This, if, if we look at the adjacent projects next to this, what we're trying to do is work across through the winter range across the east side of Thousand Lake Mountain and provide some more feed for deer and elk over there. We have uh, one of the pictures that I have in the proposal shows the use of the wildlife right next door to an area that we treated to. There's a video that I took of a helicopter while we were doing elk surveys that shows how the elk we're using that also. Um, this is a mountain brush system that's been encroached by conifer. We're into the, the phase two at least. The vegetation history from our range trend crew says that it's a bitter from the sports group. You're breaking up a little bit on us. For this Jim. project, it was ranked third for deer in the region, third for elk in. I think it's all that blue sky. Yeah. Keep going. Keep going, Jim. Was there a question? No. <laughs> Keep going. We're commenting on the blue sky. Keep going. Oh, dear Al, back here. There's an introduced species. <laughs> African lung. Looks like a good project. <laughs> you might want to throw some. Okay, you're you're breaking up on us, Jim. Um, let us see. Let's see if there's if we have so, questions. But I will say that uh, it ranked number three for deer, number three for elk in well, the region. If you've got any questions, I'd be glad to answer them. <laughs> yeah, I believe. <laughs> and number three for Turkey. Okay. <laughs> Any questions that we might or might not get an answer? To? Yeah, if it's ranked number three for Turkey, why why isn't there any upland in it? I feel like I got to take Steve's place here for a second. Love you, Kobe. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kobe. <laughs> Mm 
Down percentage? Yeah. yeah. It should it be a 90 10 split? I mean, I'm fine. The big game taking the, the, the bulk of it. And if this Frank the I for Turkey, yeah. I didn't see that in the proposal. I think, it's, the I think it's that regional the, the regional rank when they go back and rank it for their individual species. <laughs> and and I, I wouldn't object to that if it's ranked that high on it. All right. Okay. So is that a motion? Then? Yeah. Um, any other questions before I make an official motion? All right, motion to approve adjust with the adjustment of the funding. Okay. That approves the project. Okay, do we have a second? Yeah. Okay. It's Steve. I think Steve did. Okay, Steve? Yeah. Okay, Steve. Okay, we have a motion from Kobe. We have a second from Steve. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Okay, motion passes. I, so why didn't you? Thanks, Jim. I, right. Thank you, everyone. I, I have more of a like question you for, in your spreadsheet where you track total funds, do you track individual amounts that are allowed by species? And if not, if we hit one of those, do we come back and just have the discussion at the final funding meeting? Is that what we do, Eric? Yeah. Okay. That answers my question. We'll play the percentages. Did he come in late? Yeah. After a kick right Did you not see the spreadsheet up on the thing? Yeah, I saw Yeah, okay. I saw. Okay. But I just wonder if it gets into the. I, I know if it gets into the red, then we have the we have the discussion on this. Yeah. 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 We can change percentages. Yeah. It's always got to run into all the engines of five yes. percent allocations. Yeah. They're all. Oh, they are in the. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And they are all in the red. Right. Yeah. That's good. That's okay. So the money. Yeah. Sure. The money we'll, we'll, we'll need some contingency projects to. Because the funding always falls through on some things. I understand. Okay. All right, we're going to move on to the next project. Uh, 6514 Greater Fremont Plateau Habitat Restoration. 6514. Who, who we got for that one? Right here. Stan the man. Go Stan, ahead. can you hear me? <laughs> nope. Apparently not. I bet he's on mute. Would you like me to do Jim Lamb method? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, this is a greater for okay. Thanks, Eric. <laughs> I, it was effective for him, so I just thought maybe it would work for me. So, no questions. <laughs> Deer elk rank and wolf production. Okay, I don't have any cool videos though. So, okay, this is the Greater Fremont uh, Plateau Phase Five, and this is now working up onto the Forest Service. So. A couple of years ago, we were working to the north in Bear Valley, and the Forest Service got a hold of us and said, hey, we we're wanting to do some work on the forest. Can we do the, uh, the cultural resources? So the stuff where you see the black line, that's a fence line between the forest and, and private and, and BLM. But anyways, all the stuff in the black there is uh, has been culturally cleared for this treatment. So this spring, uh, about three weeks ago, they signed a 87,000 acre uh, NEPA decision for this uh, range, and this is part of it. So we have the NEPA on the table and the cultural resources on the table and ready to go. So this project primarily this year is 1,800 acres and change of seeding and mastication on the north end of Upper Bear Valley. And then in the repairing area, we're gonna do lock and scatter. I call it strategically placed trees lock and scatter to help the repairing area. And then there's also some rabbit brush mowing, some harrow work and for primarily prairie dogs. So anyways, and then on private ground, we are gonna do some z dike structures, rabbit brush mowing, lock and scatter um, on these private lands. So one thing I wanna point out is the partners on this project. The permittee has brought his full 450,000 of NRCS funds to this project. Both landowners are paying almost 100% through the NRCS for their treatments. So what we're what we're asking for here is primarily just the work on the BLM or on the forest service land. So this is Bear Creek uh, on the forest. You can see it's encroached. You can see that we're starting to see channelization and down cutting. Um, overgrazing just because the forage isn't available other places. There are leather side shows. Uh, here's the cows. This is a crossing. They want to make a low water crossing to kind of remove the, the erosion we're getting there. And this spring here, they're going to actually fix 
the, the water development and then uh, trough it and make it so it's protected. So this is Upper Bear Valley, just kind of give you a picture of it. We're gonna clean up the edges there uh, in the background and then that hill with the scattered trees on it, that is targeted to be um, treated to. Uh, or this is a private federal everything mixed in together. What's the, what's the, and I, it's probably in the project, I'm sorry, but the graze, the plan for grazing moving forward. So moving forward, the permittee will stay off this pasture for two full growing seasons. And then if it's recovered, the beaker of the forest will let them back on. On the private ground, where we're not doing any vegetation or any planting, they don't have to stay off. Besides, for the south landowner, he is already, we did some vegetation treatment in a project this year, so he's off for two years. So they, and they are fenced, so they can control that grazing. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of different partners here uh, that are coming in. Another thing to know, all these NRCS contracts are funded. The contracts are written and approved. The funds are ready to be obligated. They're sitting in my drawer just waiting for everyone else's blessing and then signatures will come and the money will flow. I'm, I did make a note on this one, but I think, isn't this the one where you had some pretty extensive fencing in the springs area to keep the cows out of the springs? Or am I thinking of a different one? I'm thinking I think one. there is the one spring that is we that are fencing one? off. And we are fencing the forest and the BLM boundary because the BLM we just treated last year. So those cows will be able to go back on a year before the, the cows on the forest. So we don't want the cows coming from the yeah. BLM up on the forest. And that will have the wildlife markers on it and built the wildlife friendly specs. Any questions on this one? There's a lot going on here. I kind of described it as taking your kids to Costco with the sportsman's groups. You go there for toilet paper and olive oil and you walk out with goldfish and whatever else to keep them quiet. So anyways, but it's worth it. This is a great project, an area that needs it. I believe it ranked number two for deer and like number five for elk. I just want to comment, nice job on getting that other funding. It's nice to see other fundings from different uh, sources. Thank you, Steve. Yeah, good, good NRCS work. Yeah. So, no. any other questions for Stan on this project? I'll move to accept it. Okay. We have a motion from Randy. Second. Second. Second from Angie. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Say no. Okay. Motion passes. Thanks, Dan. Okay. It is 10.28, so we're going to take a 10-minute break, and then we're going to come back, and we'll jump back in uh, to the Southern Region Project, 6698 at that point. So we're going to take a 10-minute break. Thanks. If you need these.
Okay, our next projects. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Curtis. Curtis. Okay, 6698 Indian Peaks WMA Mule Deer Habitat Improvement Project, Phase 4. Curtis, you on for that? 6698. Mm -hmm. I love Indian Peaks. Hey, Curtis. It's pretty. Cool. <laughs> He's still on. He's online, but Curtis, can you hear me? Somebody text him. <laughs> Gary's we're gonna we'll give him a second there. He's ready for the next one. What's his number? I don't know. What's his number? So, oh, his number? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can cover it. Didn't you think that's what it too? The next one I might not be. So. Uh, this is out on our Indian Peaks Wildlife Management Area, out, out in Beaver County. Yeah, let's do the map. Um, we go out there way out west of Milford, out on the Southwest Desert. We have a great elk herd out there. Okay. Hey guys. Yeah, I, I can take it. I, I was in presenting to the uh, law enforcement guys talking about stuff on peril and front. So our our break was their, their questions were longer than our break. I apologize. So Thanks for we're, we're more important than them anyway. So yeah, I'm back. I, I got my priorities squared around now. Sorry for the delay. Um, no Indian Peaks. Gary was, Gary was telling the story about um, the, the deer herd, the elk herd out there. I would say you know, the elk herd is doing really well out there right now. The deer herd is struggling. So if you look at the title of this, it's Indian Peaks WMA Habitat Improvement for Deer. And that's our, that's our objective. We're trying to do things on the WMA that improve the WMA for mule deer and the the background on this project is we reached out to everyone that has history with the WMA and tried to learn as much information about mule deer use in its, in, in its history and its past and try to understand why the, the decline in the mule deer out there. And we, we think we have some ideas on what's going on and you know we're really lucky to have the landscape forecasting by the Nature Conservancy done on this property to help validate some of the ideas that we're using to design our project. And so that's a, a little bit of the background of how we got to what we're doing on this project. So this project has really three parts to it. Part number one is we're trying to reintroduce fire to the landscape. So we have a prescribed fire component that is planned and the reality of the prescribed fire happening is finally starting to feel like it has some traction. We have a prescribed fire plan drafted and out for signature with forestry fire and state land. And we feel like there is potential for us to light a fire if it were funded. If, if we don't get funding for, or the prescription doesn't get met for the fire to happen, our backup plan for the fire is to treat the uh, mastication internally. So that's the polygon that's highlighted right now is about a 775 acre mastication. And we've had several phases of this now where we, we didn't get the fire lit and we took the money and did a lot of really great work, lop and scatter and clearing out some of the drainages so that we could have our riparian habitat have the benefit. And, and now the, the one piece of the puzzle that we have left is this mastication. 
and then the fire. So priority number one is the fire. Priority number two is the mastication if we can't light the fire. And um, one thing that has been brought to our attention through our maintenance folks, they do all of our fence maintenance. And you see the line there, the line is actually supposed to be bumped over onto our property boundary line. But what that is, is a, a fence line. I don't know where the GIS mistake was made there, but it's, it's the Southern fence line for our WMA is where we would look to replace the fence. And we have four uh, square miles here. So each side of the each side of the property is a significant fencing uh, maintenance need. And especially the southern side has gotten to the point where maintenance is a whole lot like building. And so we're to the point where we need to just rebuild that fence. And, and we're hoping that we can get the funding to start the, the four-year cycle and do one side of the fence each year over the next four years to protect the work that is happening, that it has gone on and that is going to happen in the future. Scrolling through the pictures, you can see the drainages where the fire would take place here. So we would light fire in the lower elevations and let it burn up to the top of Indian Peak, which is on the right side edge of that picture. And then some of the other photos that are in here show the, the degraded stream banks, the crowding of PJ to choke out the understory to where there's virtually nothing in the understory or brush is just barely hanging on by its head. So we're hoping to do these treatments and, you know, eventually have a WMA that is secure from wild horses coming in by doing the fencing work and keeping trespass cattle out, but also make it a, a safe haven and a, a resource for our wildlife out there. So turkeys are in the area. We've got sage grouse that are close by and we hope that they come back into the area. There is historic use for sage grouse there, but primary benefit of the project is gonna be deer and elk on, on this particular project. With that, I'll take any questions you guys might have. Eric, can I jump in real quick? Well, yeah, go ahead, Gary. The fence part as well. Just some background and history. We have a, a long standing. You might need to come up here so they can hear you on the yeah. line. We, we have a long standing historical livestock trespass issue on this WMA, and we were hit really hard this last year. And our law enforcement guys were doing an incredible job. And then the guy that's doing the, the chronic trespassing found a county ordinance that said that a lawful fence in Beaver County has to be four and a half feet tall and four strands and had all this stuff defined. And he said, you can't enforce anything on me because you don't have a lawful fence. And so we, we've looked at our fence and we actually met with and have been with Beaver County Commission and they are changing the county ordinance because they recognize a four and a half foot fence is not what, what is wanted in a county ordinance. They recognize that that's not wildlife friendly it's not something that exists on the landscape anywhere anyway, but we've met with the county commission and they are changing their ordinance to match that. But they said, you guys have got to do your part and make sure we have this south section specifically. We have several sections that are only three strands. And so it's part of why we've selected this south section is we've got to make sure now that we've pushed the county to get that ordinance updated, we've got to do our part and say, we really are going to meet the new ordinance and, and be ready. So just wanted to throw that in there. So Gary, is it fair to say, given the ranking of this, that the fence is your number one priority? If, if, if we did nothing else, the fence to me is the absolutely the number one priority. Curtis might disagree, but I think I, I, I still think the fire is the number one priority, but I, I think realistically, the fence is something that eventually needs to be in place. And it's, <clears throat> it's a four year deal. It's too much to bite off to do all of the perimeter of this fence in one year. And so if we can start and do something, if the fence is what's palatable and what we can, can make happen, we'll go and start working on the fence and ask for money to do these treatments in the future. But it, it, the whole thing doesn't work without the fence. So if we don't have the fence eventually, these treatments and these, these reseeding efforts, the work that we've done in here all get 
uh, no benefit to wildlife because trespass cattle and horses take up all the resources. And so that's where we're at. So, Yes, the fence is the number one priority. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, I thought you mentioned the other day that you'd have a little bit better estimates on fencing. Yeah. I'm just wondering about so, the cost on this one. I, what has he got down? Six fifty. <laughs> Six fifty might be closer. I know Kendall had nine dollars uh, on the Fillmore one. I, I'll just I'll shoot you straight. We got a fence for two dollars and fifty cents at Clear Lake in the last two months. Um, I talked to the contractor and I said, what's going on? It was a real contractor, somebody we use all the time. And I said, Marque, what's going on? He said, it's been a long, hard winter. There has not been a job out there for a long time. You're going to see a market correction. Okay. So just, I don't know what it will settle at. I think 250 was probably a swing the far direction saying we're going to get this first job that's out the door. But by July, it could be, could be back up in the four to six to dollar range by, by midsummer, absolutely. But I don't think we're going to see the nine dollar. I hope. I hope not. It's hard to. We we've all swung to wanting to bid for nine because yeah. we've been burned, right? We we got out there and we had to pay. So, so. Yeah. Right. Full, but I'm not. That's one 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 case. So the the reason for the price here is we built a fence for the BLM. And it was in the Southwest desert, several miles down the road from this, but still kind of in this neck of the woods. And that was what the cost of that fence ended up being. And so that's where we came up with these numbers, but it was at a time where barbed wire was hard to get, T posts were hard to get, stays were impossible to get. And so, you know, that's where the number came from. I like Gary saying, feel like the number might be a little lower than this, but this is still a long ways from civilization. And I think you're still gonna be on a higher scale than Clear Lake. Um, so that's my take on fence prices here. Okay, any other questions? Can I assume your question is based upon this isn't ranked high? So you're trying to figure out what-, what It's not be. ranked high and the sportsman's groups didn't support it yesterday. So my goal is the fence. Um, and I think, in fact, I'll, I'll just do a motion. Um, motion to approve it, but raise it to $100,000. Um, and, and I'll speak to that motion. I think we float this to the next meeting at 100 grand. If we can't get it at 100 grand, that, and that's just under $5 a foot. If we can't get it to 100 grand, I don't know that it's worth putting anything on it. I don't know that it's worth putting a contract up there for less than the whole side of yeah, that. Do the four miles if we're doing. So I'm gonna, that's my motion. So what I hear you saying, Tyler, is that just discussion on the motion is that this isn't getting the 570 from WRI. It's not going to happen. No, and I think, you know, Curtis, I don't know if he mentioned this. He's mentioned it in other, in other presentations. But the other thing that's going on in this area is that BLM is is now looking to re redo their EA for handling out. And I think the burn, I, I would really like to see the burn happen, but I kind of want to see it happen with BLM at the table. And I think it'd be cheaper that way, honestly. Um, the mastication, you know, I'd love to do the mastication too, but I just don't know what we're going to get to it. It's too far down the list. So I don't want to sound petty, but if we're just going to go fencing, I don't see any money coming from up one. And I agree with your logic. I think, you know, especially if that's going to help this area, that's one thing. Well, like I say, these guys are really fighting the battle with, yeah. you know, landowners and, you know, permit, permittees adjacent to us. And, and at some point, you, you got to have a fence. Yeah. No, so, no, I agree. I, I think that needs to I be think done. The, the grazing management has to do with the, the sage grouse and sage grouse use that we anticipate seeing come back on there with the Hamlin Valley Reef and my Valley Reef and coming back online. They should all come together as part of the overall picture. Mm -hmm. No, and I agree. All that other stuff will yeah. bring, hopefully bring it back in and it's been hopeful. Yeah. And, and, I, and I'm thinking about just the whole project is, um, you know, one of, one of the, one of the biggest pushes we've had from big game hunters over the last several years is to increase the elk objective on Indian Peaks, West Desert, Southwest Desert specifically. And this project is is really important 
to that. Now, I, I do think that there's other things to take into consideration when we're ranking. Um, but I'm thinking in my mind that that um, unit plans are up for a rewrite this year. And, and so I'm just trying to work through the fact that we've kept our end of the, we negotiated this last time we rewrote it, that we would hit the objective before we asked for an increase again. And um, sportsmen are going to be asking for an increase in the elk objective on the unit. And I, I see how overgrown that is, I guess. If, if I could make an argument for the upland component too, we did a whole bunch of work on previous um, projects and the work was along the riparian corridors. And to put turkeys back in here, that was part of the idea was to have those cottonwood galleries opened up and start creating uh, an atmosphere that was, you know, good habitat for turkeys. And so we're talking about taking, you know, turkeys that we trap places and bringing them and putting them back in here. And if we have trespass cattle that get in here, that's the first place they go is those riparian corridors and wreck that habitat. And so I, I think there's more value in, in the fence protecting that habitat for the upland component than maybe what's getting credit. For. So that would be my argument for keeping the upland component there. All right, that's, that's a lot of discussion on Tyler's motion, I think. No, no I'm fine. <laughs> so, okay, so maybe restate where, where we're at with the motion. Okay, uh, motion to approve it with an increase from 40,000 to 100,000. And I will also include that motion change it to 100% big game. Okay. I like the big game getting it all where, I mean, our first thing you think of when you're when you think of a fence is, is cattle and uh, like the gentleman said, the cattle's trashing the, the habitat that the birds are going to use too, Tyler. What's this project for though? Really, the project is for the elk and the deer. And to be honest, you're not going to get 10, there's not $10,000 in upland. I'm going to get two, pro, I'm get. I'm going to guess right now, I'm going to get two upland projects this year. And that's going to be those two biologists. Everything else is going to be bled off in this stuff. And this is ten thousand dollars from Upland. Don't have it. I mean, I'll I'll explain my motion. You know, I I mentioned it before. I don't think that we need to hit the Upland budget with anything sage grouse related. I think that if we would just kill the Upland budget every year if we had sage grouse as part of that. That's why that's why I changed it to one hundred percent. And this is something I think we'll discuss in the next meeting. To me, this is just kind of putting a, an asterisk on this project saying, do we want it bad enough? If we do, we're going to have to put a hundred grand on it. Okay. So the current motion on the table, though, is, is a 9 10. No, I went to 100. No, okay. You switch it to 100. Okay. I'll start Sorry. the motion. Okay. So we have a motion from Tyler to raise to 100,000, 100% big game. And so we have a second from Kobe. Um, all in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed, say no. Okay, motion passes. Okay, thanks for the good discussion on that. Uh, it'll be good to get the fencing done on this project this year, and, and hopefully next year we'll, we'll look to more work there. So. Okay, next project, 6499 Loose Springs Wet Meadow and Sagebrush Habitat Restoration. Stan, you're up. So this is Stan Gurley again from the Southern Region. So this is the Loose Springs Wet Meadow and Sagebrush Restoration Project. This is a sitless section that is in an area where uh, we have worked with the BLM uh, to do extensive amount of work, but as mentioned, the, the hold up with <clears throat> NEPA in the area is an issue. So anyways, um, working with Sitla, this is an area that has water, so there's two springs on this set section, and uh, they're getting destroyed by wild horses and then just overuse from livestock and everything else. So uh, the private there to the west, uh, we treated through WRI and NRCS, we've done uh, three NRCS projects there, and then um, and worked with WRI, and it's completely fenced around. 
And so we've done bull hawk seeding. We've sprayed rejuvera through with Bayer as a test plot, and they're monitoring that for us. And then we also did some Z-dike structures in the springs or in the washes there. So on this uh, silo section, it's a very busy project. It's an old burn from, I believe, 1972 is what Sitla told me. Uh, and because of the, the overuse of the grasses and forbs, there's hardly any uh, grass and forbs there. It's pretty much a solid stand of sagebrush. I call it phase three sagebrush as we go by our phases of pinion and juniper. So what the idea is, is that we go in there, we lop and scatter the trees that are starting to come into the old burn, and then we're going to take a harrow and harrow the sagebrush just to break it up and in, get grasses and forbs back. Um, we're also going to fence it off, and Sitla is providing two cattle guards so we don't have to worry about gates. There's already a cattle guard on the road coming from the private, and these are all county roads maintained, so they're open to the public. Um, then there's some rabbit brush we're going to mow. We're going to fence off the spring heads with wildlife friendly fence, the pole fence. And then Silla's already got a spring development there. They're just going to fix it so we can have a watering source down below. The idea is that we for sure keep the horses out of the springs and hopefully out of the section. Um, so here's some of the pictures. So that fenced off area is one of the spring collections right now. You can see the rabbit brush in there. You can see the trees that are starting to infill into the area. Obviously, the livestock is doing phenomenal. Um, Again, you would see the trampling, you'd see the pedestal of the, the vegetation there. So, uh, and then two years after we plant, we're going to come back in and spray, uh, spray plateau to combat the cheatgrass that we're expecting to get. There is a pretty, you know, we don't find much cheatgrass in there, but one thing working with the Scylla um, range manager, he is very proactive uh, when we do anything seeding wise he wants to make sure we're going back in and treating the the cheap grass component so this is a turkey that was killed right next door i won't tell the story because it's a little bit bitter but anyways any questions love this project oh thank you i was tickled when i read it and i love the protection that you're putting in um, in those spring areas oh thank you another thing to point out is there is the permittee is actually bringing uh, a good portion of that. Um, so it's not quite as much as we uh, would hope for, but it is a long ways from home and things are expensive that way and it's not a huge footprint. But hopefully this hopefully this ties into other treatments, the BLM treatments that are ready to go as soon as we get the NEPA, the cultural resources already done and everyone's on board just waiting. And we just decided to move on this to save those springs. Okay, any other questions for Stan? I'll move to accept that. Okay, so there's a motion from Randy. Yep, second. I'll second it. Okay, we have a second from Andy. All in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, any opposed, say no. Okay, <coughs> motion passes. Thanks, Stan. Okay, next project, 5549 Lake Mountain Description fire we got for that one i'm up on this one okay thanks curtis go ahead presenting this project today for jake shoppy power ranger district of the dixie national forest this is over on uh, john's valley uh, mount dutton is the unit for deer and elk right next to bryce canyon national park so that kind of orients you in the world where we're talking about here this is in the, the Mud Springs NEPA area. We've done a whole bunch of work in this area over the past five to seven years. And this is a continuation of that work. For those of you that have spent time over here, um, this is Flake Mountain. And Flake Mountain is kind of a sheer face with a great flat top on the top of it. Gets heavy use by deer and elk, especially in the winter time by elk but it could be year round use. And, and right now the, the best way to treat this area is prescribed fire. So um, that's a picture of Flake Mountain, kind of an idea of where you're at. You've got, you know, PowerPoint there in the background and working with Jake, the, uh, I spoke with him about this project. 
there's a, a high level of certainty that they can pull this fire off this year. They have been working for the last seven or eight months on getting the prescribed fire documentation done and all of the prescriptions in place. They've got uh, cooperation with forestry, fire and state land, as well as the fire departments around the area and their internal fire and fuel guys. They're gonna take the lead on lighting the fire and, and taking care of it. And, you know, you've got lots of species that use the area, but uh, predominantly big game is what's gonna benefit from this fire. Um, there are sage grouse close by, there are prairie dogs close by, but I, I think this particular project is, is really looking at benefiting deer and elk. And so that's why the ask from Habitat Council is 100% big game. Um, I think the other species stand to benefit from big game not spending more time in the areas that they call home but the polygon design for this particular project is primarily big game so twenty thousand dollars is the ask from habitat council 100 percent big game and light a fire on flake mountain the understories there there's plenty of diversity of species we just need to have some fire back in here without any questions <clears throat> is this the one with the, the BYU t-shirt comes with it? Yeah, he got like $55,000 for wearing his BYU t-shirt. I almost put one on today for you guys. <laughs> <clears throat> so I'm not a BYU fan. Troy is. Though. <laughs> but that was fun. So the yeah, I did community... have support from the sportsman group yesterday, or Tuesday. So Right. Any questions? Okay, do we have a motion on this one? I'll make the motion to approve it. Okay, we have a motion from Tyler. I'll second. Second from Randy? Yes. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Okay, thanks. Um, next project, uh, 6661 Hans Pumpernickel Shared Stewardship, Phase 2. Who's got that one? Kendall. Thanks. So Hans Pumpernickel, Phase 2, this was a project put together by Sean Kelly out of the Film One Field Office. And um, it's gone through Shared Stewardship. I don't know where it stands as far as how that ranked out. I talked to Brian Monroe yesterday. And, he still hasn't heard anything on the Forest Service, but uh, the project is located on the east side of the Pavant Mountain Range, uh, just off Highway 50. And we're on the first phase, we've actually been able to treat uh, about 978 acres. And we just uh, going to move a new contractor in there in a couple weeks. Another contractor moved around. So kind of the north part uh, of this project is, is being worked on. I think what Sean's asking for is um, about 1.2 million, which is a, a big ask through the shared stewardship. Looking to treat about 4,000 acres, and it'll all be cut and piled, and then their fuels crew will come back in and kind of burn uh, some of the piles as they get moving uh, forward later in the project. Um, the other thing they're looking to do is build a, a structure, fence structure on Ivy Creek. Uh, to try to help support uh, the right area, the Bonneville Cutthroat Trout, Rainbow Trout, that Sean's got listed. Um, looking for, looks like $20,000 from Habitat Council towards this project. Uh, this project's been in the works uh, for about four or five years. And last year was the first year they were able to obtain the funding and the Forest Service has actually provided some additional funding as last year's project was only partially funded. They were able to come up with some fuels dollars to, to complete the rest of it. So uh, looks like he's got 100% big gain associated with that. Um, don't know why we, we could probably put a little bit with the sport fish coming out of Ivy Creek. It's a popular campground in Maple Grove and it does get a lot of activity and a lot of use uh, by the general public. Uh, when the campground's open, and it has a lot of nice facilities for everybody. So um, it's a good project. Um, Mike Wardle's been real instrumental in trying to get some work done on the east side of the Pavant Mountain Range. And as the map showed, it was going to tie into the fire scar on the Sawmill Fire to the north and then work its way pretty much through Red Canyon 
and all the way down to above Aurora, so on the east side of that mountain range. Great project. Um, there's been some talk in the past uh, year, year and a half with SFW and Phenol to do a reintroduction of bighorn sheep in this area on the east side of the Pomont Mountain Range. I know the NEPA and stuff still in play with the Forest Service. So. Any questions? Is WRI really going to be able to put in that much money? No, this is this is one I think is going to live and die by the shared stewardship funding. Um, it didn't go to the sportsman's careers. It didn't rank well in WRI. I mean, it ranked high, but it's kind of a lower score. My feeling on this one is that our twenty thousand is is better spent elsewhere. I mean, I would I would probably recommend we just table this. So shared stewardship. You're, what you're saying is you're not sure that we'll get all that funding or this will get funded through shared stewardship. Yeah, I think it'll get funded through shared stewardship. And if they fund it, they'll fund the whole thing. Okay. Well, or enough for you guys to do at least something. Yeah, we can definitely break it down in units like we had to on the, the bulldog. I mean, we're doing 978 acres worth of bulldog right now. And we've had to break it down. And shared stewardship didn't have enough money to fund some of it. We were under budget. Luckily, the Forest Service did, and I tried Tyler and Daniel and milked them for everything they're worth. So, fuels come up with 133,000, and that's the way we were able to finish some of that stuff. So, it's a good project, but yeah, we can definitely, if we don't get it fully funded, we can <coughs> do what we need to do to help with that. So, the, the fencing. Of the riparian habitat that's listed as in kind, looks yeah. like. I think the, what they'll do is the Forest Service fuels will do the work. Okay, so the twenty thousand dollar removal doesn't necessarily impact that from our standpoint. Right? Yeah, I don't know how that would work out in their budget. I mean, if they were fully funded for everything, all we're doing is asking for twenty thousand off the one point two. Yeah. yeah. Does does it need? You know that. At least that, you know, half that council is trying to put some money in, even if it's not very much. It won't make a difference. I don't think it's going to make a difference. Man. Shared stewardship funding recommendations have zero to do with wildlife. It's all fuels and fire. So I'll just make the motion to table it. I'll second that motion. Okay. Got a motion from Tyler to table and a second from Kobe. Um, any additional discussion for now? Okay. Uh, other than I agree with that, I hope this gets fully funded because this is a great project, yeah, especially the dancing. Yep. But we don't, have, we don't have the money. No, I agree. It's a great project. I, I mean, it's a big ask for you know to do a lot of that work. Too. They got a good price on the contract last year, and yeah, was hoping to add money to it. But I think I'm pretty sure it'll get funded by a shared stewardship. Do they have an idea when that's going to come out? I talked to one. I'm hoping you know that before we can. Under 16th or something. Yeah, two weeks. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Um, well, so we have the motion. We have a second to table. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any opposed? Say no. Okay. Motion to table passes. All right. Uh, next project, 6590 Pass Creek Safe Brushman Riparian Habitat Restoration. Stan. So, Stan again, uh, at least you gave me two in a row this time, so up down. So, this is Pass Creek, uh, which is um, near uh, just uh, west of Hatch. So, there's two different portions here. Um, the stuff to the north, that is actually Pass Creek. That's some rabbit brush mowing and then uh, a whole bunch of Z dike structures we'd like to put in. Um, part of that's on BLM, the rest is on private land. So Garfield County maintains roads through these uh, areas. The roads go up on the forest from the BLM. This ties into treatments BLM that has done on uh, the BLM ground. And then to the south is on uh, a ranch on Mammoth Creek, which is just above the Mammoth Creek fish hatchery. Uh, so what we'd like to do is do a bunch of loft and scatter uh, there's a lot of ponderosa in here. This is right in the transition from uh, pinion juniper and oak to ponderosa. We're actually starting to get into the aspen um, here. So we like to do some lop and scatter, some rabbit brush mowing, and 
then some pasture work. So uh, through the valley, as Mammoth Creek runs through there, there's a lot of uh, meadow slash pastures that have been used. Um, and it, uh, they're getting used extensively. And there's some issues with the stream. So this picture actually comes from Pass Creek. So on the stream, we'd like to put in some structure and then fence it off. So we're protecting that riparian area and plant a bunch of willows and uh, other riparian vegetation like um, um, rose, wild rose and some poplars. So this this is actually a mammoth creek, this picture. And you can see the trees are just coming down and the rabbit brush. Um, this is typical of the stream. It meanders really well, but it just, it, it lacks structure. And you can say that again <laughs> yeah. in a nice way. So, anyways, uh, we'd actually like to use some of these bigger um, Rocky Mountain juniper to put in the stream if we can get it over there. So, this does have NRCS money in it. This is all coming from the private landowner. You can see that there is willow there, it's just been very well used, a little bit over very well used. So, we'll be this is this will be a phase project too. We're going to work on this portion of the stream. Hopefully, we convince the landowner. We have this trust, but we want to show them that our projects and working with us. And it's myself and Clint Weirich, Nick, Nick Brethway from Southern Region has been instrumental in helping us um, be better fish biologists. Because uh, Clint and I both aren't fish biologists, but we want to be kind of a little bit. So these maps show the. The, the deer use, so the big clump of salmon color uh, is right there on the mammoth creek part. There's a there's not very many elk colored on the penguin, so um, there was one cow for a while and then some really old colors. I think that's pretty much, pretty much it. Like I said, uh, a lot's gonna come from the landowner and that's, that's where we're at. Any questions on that? project. This one's signed and ready to go to? Actually, it's not. So this one is the next SGI project, and depending on funding, we'll, we'll ask for the money. So the way NRCS works, it's, it's interesting. So they, they allocate money, and then they do what they call sweeps. So there's going to be a sweep on Monday, where they're going to go to all the, the whole entire state, and they're gonna sweep all the funds that aren't allocated, and they're going to put them back in the pot and re reallocating to different projects. So, and that will happen through September. So there could be the likelihood that we could pick up the funding if we get the WRI funding is very likely, but um, as of right now, it's not funded. So through NRCS, but it is the number two project. Any, any sport fish in the, that river you're showing us? Yeah, so there is sport fish. Part of the reason why we didn't claim them is because, of, and whether you agree or disagree with my reasoning, is because of the private property and not allowing public access. We decided not to include the sport fish and the potential for southern leather side chub, which have been found um, <coughs> within probably an eighth of a mile away from where we're doing the work, but we decided not to include them because of, of mainly the sports fish, just because there is no public access. Gotcha. So, How much of this project's on public versus private? It's pretty much all private. The stuff to the north is a little bit on public. Um, I might say in the... Yeah, so you can see it's just that little corner of BLM there. So majority of this is is not uh, accessible to the public. And we have approached, I have, we've had candid conversations with the, with the landowner about potentially offering that, and that's not something he's, or the family's going to do, so. So southern leather side are an eighth of a mile from so see where the project ends, that lop and scatter uh -huh. right there? That's the bridge there at Mammoth Creek where it crosses. Yep. They have surveys just below there where they found them. Okay. So, but so beyond the bridge, they didn't find them. Beyond the bridge, they did not find them. To the west, they did not find them. So okay. 
and that's probably because of habitat quality being as poor as that's it. that's what our fishery friends told us and the thought process is that they will recolonize on their own through time we hope that they move upstream as we improve the habitat i've got to say i don't love these private land projects unless there's an incentive for the public uh, access for fishing or something um <clears throat> I, I don't love these private land ones Okay. What's the uh, impact for upland? So, sage grouse, I mean, I know we've had this whole conversation today. There are sage grouse nearby. The polygons, so when I took it to the uh, Color Country um, Adaptive Man Resource Management meeting, the, or the, the farm, yeah, no, sea, sea farm, sorry get all my arms mixed up. Anyways, it goes, the polygon used to go all the way to Mammoth Creek, but then they changed it with the most recent polygon changes for sage grouse. So it cuts off about at past Creek, okay. the northern part. So sage grouse are there, there are wild turkeys. There's quite a few wild turkeys on Mammoth Creek, up and down Mammoth Creek. So, and then you're right at the fringe, you might start But I'd like trying to rebuild the stream and protect all that. How far out are you going to be able to actually fence? Because if you're like the one picture, the fence is right next to the spring. Mm -hmm. Then, I, then I'm going to say that's not doing no. up one any good. So <clears throat> that old fencing was done on a project they did on their own. The fencing that we have doesn't show in the map. We buffered it. Uh, well, we obviously tried to make the line straight as possible for the fencing. But we, uh, the idea is that we're giving at least uh, a minimum of 75 yards from the stream on both sides. So there's a fairly good portion that, you know, they still want to be able to use it for livestock production, which is their primary reason for having the property. But we want to be able to protect that, that source. Do we have any, with this project, is there any modification to the grazing at all? That would be something we'll work with them with. I mean, this is this is a this is a very interesting situation where you're put in with private landowners and the Division of Wildlife. We could show up with a whole bunch of money. We say we want to help improve your property. In this case, I think some things we need to point out here. We got Mammoth Creek Mammoth Creek Fish Hatchery that just went under a recent her renovation, what, four or five years ago? Huge renovation that is just downstream, less than two miles away. So if this goes, this is upstream, this is their main water source. If this goes to pot. And potentially the Mammoth Creek fish hatchery could be jeopardized. That's just one thing, a benefit to the public. Could their minds change about public access? Very much so. Yeah. It could. I, Families change. I'm, I'm less concerned with public access and more concerned with the fact that the condition it's in is about as bad as it's going to get, from what I can see. Um, one and two, if we don't have any sort of easement, built up with the landowner before we go and invest in protections for the riparian corridor on the property, there's no guarantee that, you know, those protections are going to be helpful. Or they just open the gate back up on the fencing. Right. I mean, we've seen it happen time and time again. If we don't have some sort of agreement with the landowner that they are agreeing to protect it. So Fish and Wildlife Service will have a 10-year agreement with them. But after 10 years, they very well could open the gates. The, the, other, the other thing, Dan, is that, um, you know, I, the most of what you said is that this is going to benefit. I understand the riparian areas benefit big game, but there's other components to this project. But most of what you said is that this is key because of the stream. And so with, with that funding, I, I, I do have one question. If this isn't funded by Habitat Council, is it viewed differently by NRCS? Is it viewed differently? Yes. Yeah, so what you're saying is they're going to sweep money into projects. They'll do that again this Monday. But if it doesn't get the Habitat Council funding right now, wouldn't then it be overlooked by NRCS? Or are they still sweeping their portion of the funding? NRCS doesn't doesn't care about match. So okay. if, if we request the funds for it, they'll give us some money for it. And that they have the funds. Maybe the difficulty for that question. If we don't get this forty thousand, we have that council. What doesn't happen to the project? 
So what would what would probably thank you, Gary? That's what, probably good. Well, probably won't happen. Well, if we don't get the if if it's not funded completely through WRI with them, it's hard to say. I mean, forty thousand dollars on a five hundred thousand dollar project is kind of a drop in the bucket. So we'd have to cut something, obviously, but we'd find something that we you know we could cut. What I was figuring we would do if we do have to cut it. We would do the rabbit brush mowing on the, the BLM and the private up to the north and then have a better plan, hopefully going into the next year with the, the other stuff to the south. We'll often scatter the rabbit brush mowing, the fencing and the stream work. That's, that was my backup plan, if you will. So what would happen if we don't get 40,000? Um, we, we just see, it's a, it's a waiting game. There's a lot of funding sources that are going into this, so I don't have a great answer. I, I, for, for me to support this, I would need to see the funding changed. Um, the request of funding from half the council would have to be changed, first of all. And second, I think we'd all like a little more assurance. So I'd make a motion to table this one. Yeah, I agree. I, I think that, you know, from my standpoint, investing in sport fish, um, native fish dollars into this is a worthwhile cause, but you got to have that assurance that it's going to be protected in perpetuity because 10 years is barely enough time for that thing to even start to showcase any sort of recovery. Okay. And then it all could be, it could be, you know, whatever. And then you're done. Mm -hmm. You're right back to where you are again. And we are out however much money we're looking at. I'll second so it. I'll second it. Okay, so we, we have a motion from Kobe <laughs> to table. We, we have a second from Steve. Um, any additional discussion on that? So I'm just gonna, I'll just say that I think it's worth the 40, just for the lava scatter portion, which is almost 900 acres of lava scatter, and that's big in benefit. Okay, so we have a motion on the table. We're gonna ask for a vote. Um, all in favor, say aye. Table? Aye. 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 Any opposed, say no. No. Okay, we have one no. Uh, motion passes the table. So uh, I will say with that, you know, that, that's where we're at with that motion on this project for, for now. Um, you know, part of Stan's job, is he's, he's our one of our bar, farm bill bi biologists, and so he works really hard, as, as, as do our other farm, farm bill bios, to try to pull in, you know, NRCS money, um, which are usually, you know, paid out to what is paid out to private landowners for their projects. And and he does a great job, and, and our farm bill bios do a great job. And so it, it, this is a project that it's kind of, from a public land standpoint, and, and, and how our money works, it, it sits on the fence, I guess, a little bit. And, and I appreciate the discussion about it um but I, I guess i would just ask you know, don't don't always discount sometimes that maybe we don't have as much access as we want but from a habitat standpoint you know these, a lot of these projects are pretty important but sure and, and so, i would echo the, the the motion had nothing to do with Stan. right i think yeah. and, and the work that he does and it also <laughs> because I, he's great um known stan for a long time but the, the other thing is i don't think this had anything really for me to do with private property i i wholly support habitat projects on private property yeah. especially from you know our standpoint in the fish world you know this is just would be a source you know for outside of the private boundary uh even if access were to afford it it's about the functionality of the improvement that we're planning on funding from a fencing standpoint which if it if we don't have some sort of agreement in place it won't work no, I agree 100% uh, with you guys. And there's there's certain things that we have to work through still with them. So, sure. and yeah. that's just fine. Well, and I don't take it personal. Yeah. So. And in a perfect world, we'd them. always have agreements that stand all the test of time. That's not always realistic. So, in a perfect world, you just work on trust. You wouldn't even have agreements. And fish are just fish. And fish are just fish. So, okay. Fish are fish. It's all right. Okay, we're moving on. Thanks. <laughs> Okay, next project, uh, 6543 Zion Migration Corridor Habitat Improvement. So that's it. Okay, yeah. Good. So Zion Migration Corridor uh, Habitat Improvement. So Daniel, if you'll turn on the uh, adjacent projects. So this is phase four of uh, projects 
uh, we brought to you guys and WRI for the course of a couple of years. So the green down to the south, the southwest, uh, that stuff is completed and you'll see some pictures of it uh, three years later. And then the blue is active. If we never get the log in there, uh, we will, but right now there's about three and a half feet of snow still. And um, then we're wanting to do this little piece right there. When I say little, that might be relative. So about 500 acres of bull hog, and then there's some stream or wet meadow rehabilitation there. So this is private ground. So on the Zion unit, this is my coin, and you've heard it before, is we raise our deer and elk on the back of private landowners on the Zion unit. They summer there, they have their fawns there, they live there all summer long, and then they migrate down to the public ground during the most, well, the later hunts in the year from the muzzleloader hunt on. So anyways, <coughs> excuse me. So what we want to do here is broadcast seed. It's the same seed mix we've used in the past on our other projects, we've seen really good results. And then we're gonna um, bull hog and then do some Z-Dike structures in this wet meadow. Um, this is, uh, private landowner's been really, really good to work with. Um, all the private landowners so far have been really good to work with. All of them have uh, kept their agreements and stayed off for the years that they've been required to. And we've seen some really good results. So if you'll go to the pictures, so we've seen, there's tons of turkeys in this area. Um, there is a little bit of public ground that I do go on sometimes. This is a major part of the Zion migration. Um, this is a picture on a trail that we found that they're funneled off of this ram and off this trail and hundreds of deer came through within the course of about three or four days. So this is what it kind of looks like before we do the treatment, and this is some before and after, or some after pictures. So the first one was the day, day or two after they finished grinding, and then the last one is this last fall. So we're seeing really good recovery from the grasses and forbs and shrub components. And another thing is we had planted some bitter brush up there, and we've actually seen results with the bitter brush coming up, and that's really excited, really exciting for. The time of year this is used. So these turkeys, we actually happen to be on a little tour with Chuck from and uh, the National Turkey Federation, and uh, it was like I released them. So, anyways, they came out perfect, and so it was like turkeys. <laughs> yeah, turkeys. Yeah. So, anyways, and then then you know these are this the animals you see. This is actually on a sit list section. The borders are private, so um, it makes you it makes the hard work any better. So, anyways. This is kind of the wet meadow area. So our goal is we're gonna go up in those ponderosas as much as we can, and you see it gets steep quick. We're gonna grind trees and just kind of open up that understory. And then we're back to that. So if you go to the documents, it does show um, how much this is used by wildlife. Uh, yeah, unless you guys wanna look at the condor. There is a lot of condors that use this area. But you can see so that, for instance, the one doe to the east of the polygon, she fawns there and, and lives there. So that cluster uh, just to the east um, of Seth Canyon is one doe, and then there's another doe to the north, and then that other doe to the west of the project. And that's where they fawn. This is their fawning area. And then that cougar, or I think there was two cougars, so... Um, Interesting, one cougar, that one of those cougars actually came from the Manti, so, and came through there and then ended up in uh, just above Cedar City. So pretty cool stuff we see with wildlife tracker. So the cougar points are blue. Uh, my eyesight says they're green, but. <laughs> <laughs> they could be real cookie. Sorry. I, I'm used to everyone knowing wildlife trackers, so. Again, NRCS is bringing a good portion of the money here. Um, Fish and Wildlife Life Service is bringing twenty-five thousand. So, I I couldn't agree more. Like the the design you know, is highly dependent on a lot of these private lands. Yeah. Looks like a great project. Thank you. Okay, any other questions on this? Is the breakdown? Do you? You want to put any in Upland, Randy? I mean, there are a lot of turkeys. So I don't know if they migrate like the deer. 
It's up to you, Randy. <coughs> what, what is it down there? What is as far as up, how much, if at all, would this impact? Is it up? It, the turkeys seem to be doing well. Is yeah. this going to impact them? Yes, it will impact them. You know, that wet meadow area, that's where they're using to feed their clutches. And I was actually surprised to see that I put that at 100% big game. I, that must have been in the fury. Yeah, if that has a real impact, yeah, I'll, I'll give 10%. Yeah, I'd say 10% is easy to swallow. Thanks, Randy. I'm reasonable most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> Team players here. Okay. Do we have a motion on this one? Hey, Randy's not reasonable on turkeys usually. Let me throw that in there. <laughs> and I'll make the motion to pass it. Okay. We have a motion from Steve. Yeah, second. And we have a second from Angie to approve. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you. Any opposed, say no. Okay. The motion carries. All right. We're almost done with some southern region projects here. Four more. Para One Front, Herbicide, Maple Hollow, Loop, Lop and Scatter, Second Mound Restoration Project. Can you make that title longer? I think I get the uh, title for the longest uh, project name. I took yep. uh, notes from Stan and, and those guys last year and tried to, to one up them here. So um, You did it. You did it. There's a candy bar waiting here for you. <laughs> Pair on front, if you've driven the I-15 corridor, this is one of the most visual project working zones in the state of Utah. A lot of people see what's going on here. We've done several different um, phases of work in this area, working starting in the valley floor and working up the, the face of the mountainside. This is a continuation of that effort. So there are... Um, Lop and scatter polygons is what we've we've lined out here, and the the lop and scatter area is um, areas that we brought machinery into and masticated up to the edges of, but couldn't get the the machines onto these benches into these areas. But it's great um, opportunity to to create transition habitat to create um, mild winter habitat. So if we don't get a lot of snowfall, we'll house a lot of deer and elk in these zones through the winter time. And so with the, the fencing that took place on the I-15 corridor, it created a disconnect to the, the habitat that used to be the winter range for this herd. And we're just doing everything in our power to try and um, mitigate that. So there's a lop and scatter component. That's what that is. Then in the treatment polygons that were the mastication areas, we've noticed since we've masticated there that we're getting significant infilling of cheat grass. And so there's, there's two different land ownerships there. Uh, State of Utah has uh, our wildlife management area is one of the landowners and the BLM is the other landowner. And it's significant to note that the, the BLM doesn't have rejuvra on their um, species or their, their chemical list that, that is allowed on their land. And so what we would look to do is spray rejuvra, which is, has, has a history of great control of cheatgrass on the state lands. And then adjacent to it on the BLM lands, we would spray plateau and have a side-by-side -side comparison of the effectiveness of Plateau versus Rejuvra and be able to help push the BLM to get their NEPA done and allow for Rejuvra to be used on their land. And so I, I think that's the story there is, you know, control the cheatgrass with the best tool we have and show the difference between the effectiveness of Rejuvra and Plateau. And so then the, the other component of this is we have on the second mound um, portion of the project, there is a prairie dog colony living there and we needed to do some work to um, make that better habitat for prairie dogs. And so we're going to go into that area and spike the sagebrush that's there 
And it's noteworthy that the, the property that we're working on for Prairie Dogs is owned by Iron County. And they bought that land specifically to create habitat for prairie dogs so that there is a spot for them to call home and not be displaced off of the land. And so, you know, that's, that's the intent of that land, although it is in an area where deer use and go, the, the purpose of the treatment there is to create habitat for prairie dogs. So we would spike and then come back in, knock down the stalks of the, the sagebrush and then seed a prairie dog friendly seed mix into that area. So that's the gist of this uh, project. With that, I'll take any questions you guys might have for me. I'm just curious on the prairie dog plot. Is that one of the plots that they're transporting uh, the Utah prairie dogs to? It is a relocation site. There are prairie dogs in an active colony on the other side of the road so very close to this area. In talking with the prairie dog biologists, they felt like if we created the, the habitat that would uh, be friendly to the prairie dogs on the other side of the road, they would naturally move over there. There is historic burrow systems there that probably wouldn't take a terribly ton of work to, to rehabitate there. So that's, that's the idea behind this project is to feel like it's an opportunity for expansion and to work towards recovery of that species. So, uh, I just want to say nice work on the uh, spray thing you're doing, um, comparing it and getting the BLM on board. Because, you know, to the best of my knowledge, it hasn't been very long that there's even been a spray for cheatgrass, and it's such a problem that that's awesome to see. So, appreciate you doing that. Thank you. Is this one ranked high enough that it's going to get there? Uh, no, I think I think the goal on this one is the spray and the, the work for the, the prairie dogs. So I think it's it's funded appropriately to get to that. And then if it gets down the list further, I think the WRI number on there is right. So. And maybe maybe that ought to be part of the motion, just so that it's clear what what we want to see funded. Um, so I'll do that. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see if there's any other questions first. <laughs> so we know where Tyler's going. Is there any other questions before we jump into the motion? Take that last Okay. Okay. Go for it, Tyler. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the fifty thousand um, dollars. With the caveat that it go towards the rejuver spray out to the left. Because then anyway, it's enough to get paid for the prairie dog. Okay. We have a motion to approve. I'll second it. Oh, please. We have a motion from Tyler to approve, and we have a second from Randy. Um, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say no. Okay. Motion. Thank you, guys. Passed. Thanks, Curtis. Thank you. Okay, uh, Long Hill Vegetation Treatment, uh, 6113. Go ahead, Stan. Last time you hear my voice today, so can't shop lucky. Um, so Long Hill Vegetation Treatment, this is on the Bald Hills, west of Parowan. Um, I think it does justice to turn on the adjacent projects. So there has been numerous projects done out here, uh, primarily for sage grouse and also um, benefiting mule deer, pronghorn, um, and elk. There's a small herd of elk out here that you know, this is on any bull unit. So there's actually a lot of people, especially in Southern Utah that hunt this area. Um, so this project has just a teeny bit on private land. So that private section there is actually subdivided. And out of all the landowners, I send a letter to each one of them. Um, only one of them was interested. We're hoping this will kind of spearhead more interest from other landowners when we work on the next phase to the north. But as of right now, that's where we're at. So that private landowner has an NRCS contract that is ready to be signed. Granted, it's only like $12,000, but it's it a week stand. <laughs> well, I'll tell you another story later about the BLM stuff. So anyways, um, the BLM, uh, the fuels, they, the fuel shop, they're very gung-ho and it sounds like they're going to push forward with this one. But there is some whopping scatter and bull hog. 
Uh, if you can go to the pictures, there's some great pictures of um, treat adjacent treatments. So this is what it looks like right now. And then I mean, you can see the understory sagebrush is a, a, a sagebrush system that has been encroached and beyond uh, just swap and scatter in a lot of places. But in some places, swap and scatter is still the tool that we can use to help save money and be wise with it. Maybe you didn't put the pictures. So anyways, the projects to the just to the south, we've had an awesome response. The grass and the forbs have come in, the prong corner in there um, year round. Uh, I went through there in uh, November and it was great to see a buck with about 20 does rotten. And it was, you know, some that I hadn't seen in that area until these treatments were done. It used to be, we didn't see anything in there. Granted, they could have been in there, but we didn't see it. Oh, here's the pictures. So this was to the west of, of the project. And we did some chain harrow in there. I don't know if there's, I hope there's some after pictures. I just went to the so, project to the south and clicked on it. So this is okay. This is every project to the south we're clicking through. I didn't have oh so here we go. There we go. Those are the pictures. So this is what it looks like. If the hill that you're looking at in the foreground or the background there, that is the project area that we're gonna be treating this year. So you can see that what we've done and the response and now where we're planning on going. So any questions on this one? I I noticed um some it looks like alfalfa fields to the east. Is there a depredation problem here? Alfalfa. Oh, oh. well, was it was in the last picture? He was just showing. Did, I'm just looking just at this. Oh, right there. Yeah. Not yeah. generally most. So that mountain range, the way it runs, this is this is kind of on the oh, oh this on the west, west side of okay. it. So yeah. most everything goes to the west. So yeah. as of this year, they did start releasing turkeys, and at Cane Springs, where see that black like hook in the middle, go down, 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 right there. This is about right there. So they, that was an area they started releasing turkeys this year. I didn't know that until I went out there to check on a bull hog and there was a whole bunch of turkeys. And then I saw Jason releasing the turkeys. So. Anyways. Those fields are not a major depredation. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I was just more curious than anything, but I was hoping they'd keep stuff up. Okay, questions? Or turkey comments. I just check the box, baby. Okay. <laughs> so I don't think we asked for any up when we or did we ask for up again? Yeah. But at the same time, I'll, I'll give us this. We didn't know <laughs> that there's going to be turkeys out there until uh, yeah, tell everything was the game project. Any other questions? <laughs> okay. okay, thank you. Thanks for everything today, guys. We have a motion on this one. Yeah, I'm motion to, to move forward. Okay, motion to co-lead with seconds. I'll second it. Okay, um, we have a second was from Craig first. So, um, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Okay, motion passes. Okay, two more and then we are gonna hit our lunch break here. So, um, number 6656, Poverty Flat, Herbicide Projects. Who's got that one? North Hills. Poverty Flat. Oh, please get it. North Hills. So I've got Poverty Flat. North Hills got fully funded. You know, we're here today. So this is Poverty Flat Phase 2, and this project is located south of Mon the town of Monroe. Uh, within the Phase 1 project we implemented in 2017, uh, the whole idea behind this was Vance Mumford, the wildlife biologist out of out of uh, the Richfield district, wanted to see some more opportunities to increase some, some shrub components after a fire. And I can't remember the year I worked on that, probably 2004, what do you think? When it probably burned, I know they were still working on it when I moved up there in 06. So anyways, the opportunity was to try to increase some more shrub components We get it uh, Fair amount of winter mule deer, three to four hundred head. There's a little group of elk that started pulling there, but they kind of go through our division ground right onto some hay fields. So Vance was looking at any opportunities after the fire to try to reestablish some sagebrush in some of this area. So in 2017, we went in and 
in the fall here we sprayed some plateau i think we were around oh, a couple hundred acres um, on our, our plateau treatment on the first phase and on the second phase uh, or what we did in the fall of 2017 we sprayed that in the spring of 2018 um, then we we actually come back and hit it again and then put some seed on um, and we got really good response from a lot of our sagebrush uh, Kevin Gunnell from Division of Wildlife Resources out of the Great Basin Research Center wanted us to leave him about 10 acres uh, so we could do kind of some plots uh, with some different chemicals associated with uh, with some herbicide treatments. So what we this picture right here shows um, Rejuver. I think this was loaded by Clint Weirich in a project that he's done. And so you're looking at non-treated um, with or on the left or the right, and then treated on the on the left. And so you kind of see the response. But in this project, we want to respray this this poverty flat area with Rejuvera. Uh, we feel like we're getting some additional cheatgrass that's starting to respond, and we just want to suppress it. But we definitely want to try to use a different chemical than Plateau. Uh, this shows the initial treatment um, with Plateau. You can kind of see what's there. There's a lot of crested wheatgrass, a little intermediate that was planted. There's some um, forage kosher in this area, but very few shrub components. So um, here's some pictures. I took uh, I took some free labor out there one day and we started planting some of these these uh, little seedling plants and, and uh, we just drilled them in and planted them but you can see the seedlings that are next to them that's what we flew to seed on so they're actually bigger that the following or the year that we seeded we had some pretty good moisture so that's everything we seeded and then we we planted some uh, was so that seed just seed. one year old? I'm sorry, I just yeah, I get it before yeah. we're past the picture. Yeah, but wow. was, we, we planted that and we had a really good fall and then a really good spring moisture. Typically this poverty flat just doesn't get hit. It's kind of in a rain shadow effect. And so as the storms come up from the south, they kind of bypass this. But you can kind of see what we've got uh, the first couple of years, uh, the root on it. And we did a couple different things. We There were some areas we flew seed on strictly bare ground. There was areas that we had used chain harrow and kind of worked it up and then had seed on top of it. And then we actually worked it with the seed and already blown on. So there was kind of three different spots. And we really couldn't see much of a difference whether we covered it, whether we did but before, just kind of bare ground when we went through there. So, um, you know, we got some chucker. We got, uh, there's probably 30, 40 head of elk. And, but there's several hundred head of deer that pass through this area right on the green fields. But what we're asking for is 17,170 uh, for this project strictly to put Rejuvra on. And we're working with Clint Weirich on this one. He's got uh, ties to the chemical reps with Bear. We feel pretty comfortable we can get it done um, for that price. Uh, as far as upland game, it's a heavy um, hunted area for, for chuckers. And that's, that's the only reason there. And we've included Sitley in it, uh, working with Scott Chamberlain. He's willing to take the plunge with us and, and treat a little bit of Sitley ground that's right next door. Can you, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Kendall, just because I've been out of the game for a bit, can you just explain to me some of the difference between Plateau and Rejuvera and, and, and your thoughts there? Maybe Pierre. I think Rejuvera has a longer life, and specifically Rejuvera goes on after you have a seeded. Rejuvera stones. All yep. germination. Not just you you have, you've got to have. Okay, so after you have established yep. yeah. the plant communities that you want, you can keep your perennials and get rid of your annuals. And it stops all germination for several years. For like yeah. five yeah. years. So yeah. totally, the five years. Okay. It'll totally exhaust your cheatgrass so it gives, seed bank. It gives everything else a chance to establish, fill in. But you can't seed into it. Yeah. So the, you don't want to, if you, if you have really. Uh, depleted understory, you're going to have a moonscape. If you, spray it, it, so. you do it post successful project, or even in where it's just invading and you still have decent amount of understory. And I will say, we've done a couple of test trips, and you would say and think it's depleted, but it surprises you what's there that you release. Yeah, I like, recommend if you're not sure, try a strip, see what happened before you treat the whole area. We've been surprised. Just that extra soil moisture yeah. in the spring stuff comes that you would never, yeah. never guess was there. Okay. And that's the difference. And with Plateau, we went, um, I think I went six, six ounces and four ounces surfactant on it. Oh, wow. And so we hit it. We hit it pretty, pretty good. Pretty heavy. Yeah. 
in fact, when the guy come back, you know, to, to see that he, he, he could definitely, when he was flying in, he could definitely see the burn scar from the chemicals. So we tried to hit it pretty good, but what we're doing is just like what Danny and, and Mark and, and Gary mentioned that now we're seeing the results of that chemical leaving and we're getting a flush. So You've everything that's there to establish that we can put the rejuver on, then we get what Mark and Gary and Danny talked about. Hopefully in the next few years, it'll be approved for BLM use as well. Yeah. Cool. We heard some promising stuff at our interagency meeting in Cedar City, the Cedar City BLM build office. How does it meet with all the board? Yeah. Right now? They, they, and all across this bench too, you know, as you look at cross poverty flat, it's, you know, this is only one piece of division ground and one piece of city, which is really small, but, but the BLM owns a lot of that country and, you know, we can't treat it. So it kind of gives us an opportunity as another test area or a test plot, if you would, you know, to show what can and can't be done, you know, moving forward and maybe the BLM will jump on that as well. And one, one more quick question that I promise I'm done. And that is like, you see, I mean, yeah, like you said, you plateau a surfactant and like it burns, sometimes you can kill other stuff. Do you see that with Rajura or do you? So the one, the unanticipated, I, I should have anticipated, but we lost it, we, we lose annual forms that you care about. That. Sure, that makes sense. Be a big deal. For, for a time, yeah. You, yeah. yeah. Um, and then Portage Kosha doesn't do well. It'll, yeah, it'll take a little burn on that. You have to, if you're bringing it in an area that you've got to stop the Portage Kosha, you've got to knowingly say, I'm, I'm all in on going a different direction. Did I not put Portage Kosha on It's there. It's Brevin, you know. Yeah. Plata hurts Portage Kosha too. Yeah. yeah. So it's kind of a catch-22, but it's something. No, it's awesome. awesome. Clint Wyrick runs his dogs out there, and you know he was pretty excited about this. And I think he's had enough experience or a little bit of experience, plus with the reps and what Gary brings to the table and Danny. That you know we're we're willing to try it. Quick question, my little world. So you've got checkers on there, and you said it's being hunted. Yeah, uh, fairly heavily with checkers. So maybe they'll go try it. But that's not what I was going to ask. Um, checkers, I. I I know you can argue they eat other things, but cheap grass <laughs> is an essential part of their diet because they need that early spring. They'll be able to come a little bit and chew on what we miss, and then all the fringe they'll have. There's a little stream that right there. Yeah. 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 And there's a little, there's a little stream, yeah. right bearing stream, right. planting the past. He's, yeah. he's cut a lot of willows along this area, and there's a stream just to the west. This problem. Sorry, Randy, we're going to get rid of that. They'll still be back. I know cheatgrass is a scourge, um, but in my world, if we talk only up one, they have to have it. It is a good point. I mean, we, checkers are a naturalized invasive, right? That eat invasives primarily. And what are we going to do to replace cheatgrass with something that they're going to find palatable and be able to thrive on? <laughs> if we start using this more. fish. I'm, I'm <laughs> serious. <laughs> no, no way is going to take that no. cheatgrass. There's no cheatgrass on farming flat. No, I, I'm thinking about localized bumps when we start using this more often. It's something we need to be thinking about. And with <laughs> this localized, it's small stuff. Right. I mean, because if you take out the main food source, what, I can't remember. This wasn't very big. What was it like? 500 acres oh, or something It's less like than that. that. It wasn't very yeah, big. 200, but two acres. We can do it in strips. Yeah, but you will lose. I mean, because that's the beauty and bad thing of Upland. Small projects make all the difference. And right. you, you will lose you will lose populations in small areas based upon small projects. I'm just wondering what, what's in our seed mix that we're going to put out there that would be something. Yeah, essentially, we haven't decided to seed into it just because of the chemical. Okay, but after that five-year... Yeah. When, well, you have a lot there. Exactly. We've got well, a lot there that's established. I mean, we got a lot of perennial stuff. So, and, and a we, lot of the chuckers. We've shown chuckers doing really well in the absence of cheatgrass in certain areas. As long as they have something to replace it. Yeah. Yes. And I love what, I mean, like those pictures. Those are my favorite pictures out of all the projects because you can see the grasses and the forbs coming back. And forbs are a big deal. Um, the, the insects that all those things are going to bring are a big deal. <laughs> so it's just, this project's down in the valley. Okay, I have to make too. the observation. Okay. <laughs> um, we have a motion on this one. I'll make the motion to approve it. Okay. Motion. Do I have a second? Do I have a second? 
Okay, we have a motion from Tyler and we have a second from Andy to approve. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Okay, motion passes. Okay. Got the next one too, Kendall? Yes, sir. Yeah, 6681 Fillmore WMA Habitat Improvement Project. Go ahead. I'm glad this one come up or was out of today. Um, so within the three projects, I think the main reason why this one um, kind of come about is Tyler called me one day and he said, I'm going to take everything you own. And <laughs> I said, you can't do that. I haven't spent it all. Um, so anyways, uh, the halfway hill fire is down on the bottom. It's the bottom polygons there. And it burned uh, this last summer. Um, you can see where it's located just south of, of Fillmore. But uh, with that halfway hill fire, we, we chained about 1,100 acres and it burned up our entire WMA, pretty much we escaped the whole thing. And we need to build a, an existing fence around there. The fence is gone. We're gonna partner with BLM. We have some ESR dollars associated with this. So then the halfway hill fire, WMA, uh, we'd like to clean up a few of those uh, smaller trees as well. So I've added in a lop and scatter. And then talking to the permittee, I thought constitutes a cattle guard and He's actually working with the Forest Service to do some virtual fencing. So uh, the Forest Service is trying to come up with some funding through GIP to provide um, some collars for their cattle. And so as the cattle go on to the forest, they're not going to keep the, for the cattle off the forest. They're going to put collars on them and then try to virtually create a fence boundary or a barrier with these cattle as they, as they uh, work through the allotment. And he, uh, as I was talking to Brock, he felt comfortable that we may be able to graze some of our WMA on the halfway hill uh, and just utilize kind of the same thing, create a polygon where his cattle don't go in and utilize some virtual fencing so we can still have some grazing opportunities this spring. Um, this project to the north needs to clean up some lock and scatter areas that uh, was bullhogged in 20, I think it was 2013. We did a chaining and some bullhog. Uh, properties or uh, polygons there. I'd like to try to clean that up. And probably 10 years ago, Arnold put together a pipeline, and that where that black dot is, there's a, a stub up for the division. Uh, we kind of give him a right of way for his pipeline to come down through. He's stubbed up and he's allowing us water, which we don't have any water on this WMA at all. And what we'd like to do is put in two troughs and a uh, small pipeline uh, that would be available strictly for wildlife. We do graze on the Pioneer, but there is a cattle guard that kind of keeps them back to the east and north. As far as the north one, this is Young's Field. Um, there's a fence, the yellow line is a fence, and the fence is only three strand barbs, so I'd like to replace it. That pipeline needs to be replaced. We still are getting some floods from the lower Epps fire that blew out again this year, it took out our whole entire pipeline and some of the troughs, this is that pipeline. So from the headwaters clear at the top of lower Epps, move all the way down to I-15 again this summer, took out pipelines of just an old PVC one inch, I'd like to replace it with the HDPE inch and a half, uh, rip that in from the existing trough. Uh, put in two culverts in this area so we don't have this type of situation happen. This is some pictures off the halfway hill fire, our boundary fence that goes onto the forest. Um, the fence is just not in very good shape at all, so it needs to be totally redone. And we'd like to contract that out through state contract. And here's a fence that we put together on the Nixon WMA. Uh, the guys did a great job with this one, and we'd like to do something similar on our WMA and the on the halfway hill and also Youngsville. Um, that shows a, kind of a ripper that I've used in the past with a guy out of Idaho, uh, leave a small imprint. Here's a trough that we put on our Nixon WMA uh, for the permittees. And it'll stay there as the permittees move on to the forest for, for a while, get around with water for wildlife. So any questions with this one? And I can adjust that just from, I had this at about $9 an acre and if I did the math right, we can adjust that and probably pull off oh about ninety-six thousand dollars or something if we just if we go to six dollars an acre, you know, with 
what yeah, Gary's talking about with the fence. Yeah, yeah, six dollars a foot worth of fence. So I can adjust that, but is that your number one priority then in the fence? It needs to be, I think, on the on the young spills for sure, or on the halfway hill. That's kind of what we have yet left. The young spill, they fight or they fight that fence the whole time as well. It's just a three strand barb and for whatever reason, I don't know why the three strand was there. We fenced some after um, the lower ebbs fire, we fenced some down, and then it turns into a four strand. So the pipeline is is critical too, because without that pipeline on the Young's build, we just don't, we don't have any water. There's a pipe or a trough that sits right in the middle of the fence. Uh, those guys graze both allotments, and we just need to replace that. Where is that with the dry? It's, it's like a low high neck. So 190 is what the request is. Is that more than you need for the fence? Yes, that would be the split of the WRI at the top. You just split it. But if we adjust the fence, then that capacity would come down. And, and Steve, would still be so Steve, I'm going to be real upfront on this one. I like the project, but um, I need. I'd have to know where 30% comes from, and that's 16% of my entire budget for this one project. A lot of this is turkey habitat. I mean, from the north to the south, it's all turkey and upland game, um, you know, rabbits and things like that that those people hunt. But pretty much from halfway hill fire all the way down around, it's kind of the brood stock that's been for the division for a lot of years in that Fillmore area. Uh, NWTF did throw 7500 bucks, I think, at this one. Uh, I'd like to uh, do whatever they can there. Yes, yeah, so I was going to say, I thought 30, 70. 30, 30, 70? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were going the other way with it. No, yeah, like I can. No. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I'd take, I'd take 10. I'd, I'd, I'd take ours up to 80 if that sounds better to you, Randy. I just, I mean, just the sheer, and like I said, it's a great project, but literally it's 16% of my budget. I, I, and I know maybe I shouldn't look at it that way, but I, you can split it. I, I think I'm supposed to. Um, yeah. Wow. We can move it if you want. I mean, we no, want, it, we want I mean, a lot of deer and a lot of elk and, and all yeah. those WMAs all across that Fillmore face, they they filter that way. Yeah, they're doing the options for the buyer we have money for the next yeah. year. Yeah, we'll keep putting it in every time we request fire. We're, we're, we're just in a bad spot here. Yeah. If all something that's happened, we've got to react. But, but yeah. And the chaining and, I mean, all that stuff's done. All the veg stuff is taken care of. It's just a matter of we're going to hold the producer off there for two years and we, <laughs> we have nothing. Yeah, I, mean, I, I guess I want to get the fence done. So, I mean, that's my question is, how much do you need for the fence? Well, if we do six, if you do six, I just run it. So, okay, 32,000 feet times six dollars a foot. So, Steve, let's let this conversation finish. Then it's we can talk. Sounds good, Randy. 192. So it ends up being, a, yeah, that split in the back could be 133,000 from WRI or W. Or, it's not going to get anything yeah. from WRI. That's so that whatever is that number is is what we need to make the habitat council request is what I'm saying. So still, it, as I drove by today, it's actually been bared off for what I would expect it. There's a chance. I don't know if you talked about fast. Yeah, yeah that's a good point. point. I mean, we can, we can definitely have, I don't know if I can guarantee it could all be done by July 1, but we can get it out quickly. And Maybe with the $6, I mean, we need to pull that fence out too. We rolled up some interior fence. Um, it just I didn't make sense to be in there when the fire was was over with, but we'll have to. And the BLM has enough for a mile in their ESR, so I need to I need to work good with those guys. So did that come out of the thirty two thousand? That was already tied to their ESR dollars. Okay, so we already have an offer for eighty twenty. Is it what would you suggest? On that? I, I mean, I have a hard time believing there's a WMA in the state that Upland takes up 20% of the WMA. 
Uh, they did say, Randy, that it was one of their main turkey uh, turkey places to get uh, stock from, if I heard that right. Yeah, it depends on how you define that. If it's a forage consumed, you're absolutely right. <laughs> well, and even people going there after them or, or just, I, I just, but like I said, I, and if this had come through the first meeting, I would probably want to have believed. Yeah. But I know, I have already started looking well, at the what, numbers. So what's your counter offer to so, Steve on this one, Matt? Steve, can, we go, can I go 15% just trying to stretch it? For sure, for sure, Randy, as long as they put that other percent in, into non-game. <laughs> <laughs> okay, somebody make a motion out of that. Then. I'll make the motion to, to accept it. Um, I'd, I'd like to say one thing, though. If this place, guys, if this place is uh, prone to fire, the H braces would be a lot better out of metal because that's the first thing to go in a fire is your H braces, and then you don't have a fence. So um, <clears throat> if, if there's any way to do it out of metal, I know I built a fence myself. It's a pain to do it out of metal, but it would be a lot better off in the long run if that's something that your contractor could do. Yeah, and we haven't put together the spec specifications for the fence, but we can definitely um, visit about that, uh, myself and Gary and uh, wildlife file just over there for, for those reasons. And we can use easy braces if we needed to in the middle and still stay to our wildlife specs. I didn't catch what the final suggestion was. I think 85 to 15. Okay. Okay, so we have a motion from Steve. Uh, to approve with adjusting the percentages to 85.15. Uh, do we have a second? Did we we had an issue with WRI? Yeah, let's take it to 192. That's 192. 192. <laughs> Refresh it. I've got it. 192. So we need to amend your motion. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, I, I'll amend it. Okay. Okay, so amended. I'll second. Okay, we have a second from Randy. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, any opposed say no. Okay, motion passes. All right. Thank you. Thanks, you guys. Thanks, Southern Region. Appreciate uh, the hard work on these. Uh, we're going to break for lunch. It is 12 15. We're going to break for 35 minutes and go till 12 uh, 50 for lunch. So. Thanks, everyone. We'll be back on in 35 minutes. <laughs>
some technical difficulties. Uh, looks like he's got some good help there. <laughs> Go ahead, guys. I can hear you. I just can't get it over to the headset to cancel out the kids in the background. Okay. Thanks for joining us on your vacation. So I appreciate that, Steve. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started then. Um, so we're, we're going to go back to uh, our Northeast region. Um, <coughs> and they've got three projects to, to talk to us about today. So we're going to start with project number 6558, Tabby Mountain Habitat. Can you guys hear me? Can you hear us, Steve? Hello, Steve. Can you hear us? Hey, Steve. <laughs> you want to chat? No, let's, let's chat go. Him why he can't? He can't hear us. <laughs> <laughs> Randy, <laughs> that's fine. One hundred percent big game. One hundred percent big game. <laughs> can you guys hear me? Yeah. Okay. Okay, um, I'm Tori Mathis, a habitat restoration biologist in the Northeast region. Um, so the Tabby Mountain project is on our Tabby Mountain WMA in Duchesne County, uh, near the towns of Fruitland and Tabiona. There's a couple of different components of this. Um, the, the main part of it is, uh, comes from discussions we had with Duchesne County Emergency Management. Uh, they were concerned about uh, the possibility of fires starting along Highway 208, as well as in that, uh, it, it's called the Golden Stairs area of the, the WMA right there on the north side, where there's a lot of um, target shooting that takes place. And they wanted to, to discuss the possibility of creating some fire breaks on our WMA to protect the town of Taviona in case of a start along with, uh, you know, along the road there on Highway 208. If, if a fire started, it would blow to the east towards Starvation Reservoir. So we went out on the ground and talked with them and, and looked at this and we decided that we could do some, some green strip mowing along some of the roads in the WMA and those would actually be beneficial to protect uh, sage grouse habitat uh, wintering sage grass habitat, as well as, you know, if a fire started on there, protect our, our elk and mule deer habitat as well. But then up in that golden stairs area, we thought a, a bull hog could be an appropriate tool to um, create some additional fire breaks. And by adding some seed, it should provide additional habitat for uh, wintering elk and deer as well. So we're hoping that, that this will will fulfill a couple of important uh, purposes, you know, providing some fire breaks in case of a, a fire start, as well as providing additional winter habitat for those elk and deer that come down and use this WMA during the winter. Um, the other component farther to the west uh, is uh, along a, a small stream and with the spring there. Um, so the stream we're, we're going to, to go in and do some um, Z dike strippers to try to control head cuts and, and prevent down cutting, preserve the, the wet stream areas there that could be important for a, a number of different wildlife. Um, and then there's a spring just right there. Uh, it's called Beer Spring, fenced off, um, but the fence is needing some maintenance. It's not in great condition. Sometimes the, the cows get in there. 
Um, but also on the very, the bottom edge of that, um, I want to reroute that fence to follow the road a little bit because the cows are kind of trail right along the edge of that fence and kind of where the water comes out of the exclosure, it's kind of creating a head cut just because of all the, 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 the trailing along that fence. So this will reroute that section fence, maintain or, or replace or repair the other parts of that uh, exclosure, and then try to protect the that stream. Uh, so most of these pictures, this is um, along the fence line where some of those fire breaks or the strips would be. Uh, this is typical of the head cuts in there. You can see the riparian or the wet areas. It's it's kind of an unusual spot. The, the stream is actually comes from a, uh, an irrigation ditch that failed up above, but it's been flowing down this channel for long enough. It's developed riparian characteristics, but there aren't any large trees. There are sedges and willows. And um, by controlling these head cuts, we hope to preserve the, the, the good stuff that's in there and promote even further riparian development. And so, um, are there any questions? Questions on this one? So I think you're all aware that mountain's pretty important <coughs> for us. Um, <coughs> yeah. and, uh, maintain, ma maintaining and managing our, our WMA is really important as, you, as you've seen in all these other projects. But this one for sure is is uh, high value to us. And, hey, Tyler, are, are, where are we at on the WRI side on this? We just want that funded. It's, it's highly rare. So I, I'll ask the naive question. What you say it's the Tabioni area is on the, high on the radar list. Why? Uh, it's just really high value, big game. Okay, okay. Just, just because of the habitat. Yeah. Okay. You just have so much, not just big game, you just have so much wildlife. Anything that's yeah. forced out of sage grouse in there. there yeah, so anything that's forced out of the strawberry valley to yeah. the um, to the east comes over on the tabby. Okay. Any questions? It's a really cool area. We should go see, I, we should go see it. Yeah. So I'll move to um, approve the project. We have a motion from Randy to have a second. I have a second. Okay, a second from Kobe. All in favor say aye. 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 Any Thank opposed? You. Just out of curiosity, what was the breakdown on that? I never seen that come up. I might have missed it having technical difficulties. Ooh. 100% non game fish for you. <laughs> 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 and honestly, Steve, like I'm okay with this one being 100% big game, even though it's not just big game that uses it, because it is so important to big game. Yeah, gotcha. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, next project: 6694 Anthro Avinaquin Lawton Scatter. Corey, you up for that one too? Um, I think we have Bob Christensen from the Ashland National Forest on. Um, oh, Bob can take over on this one. Go ahead, Bob. Yeah, so introduce yourself and, and uh, you can go. Yeah, so Bob Christensen on the Ashley National Forest, biologist over here in the Duchesne area. Um, yeah, so for this project, uh, there's uh, it's a total of 2,300, well, 2,361 acres. Um, there is uh, 883 acres that's on state land. And uh, right adjacent to that, as the forest service part of it so there's a little over almost 1500 acres it's on forest service so as you're as you see it there you can see the the treatment units um on forest versus the ones on state the ones on state were actually ones that were treated a number of years ago and on those units we'll be going in and uh, maintaining that treatment and cutting out the uh, encroaching conifers that are that are growing in there again. Uh, so this is just a, a maintenance for that state land there for the previous lop and scatter. Uh, the forest part of it though is new lop and scatter. 
And primarily at the corner for trees are pinion and juniper, but there's, there is a lot of dug fir in there as well that's growing in those sagebrush and those uh, up on mountain as well. Over to the, the east are two treatment units up on Anthro Mountain. Um, these Anthro Mountain, we've done a lot of work up there with removing conifer encroachment. Um, and these are our last two units that we needed to uh, remove those encroaching conifers. Um, so in the photos, this is uh, uh, an adjacent unit that we did two years ago. Uh, so this that photo there is, is uh, before the treatment. And uh, get to the next photo there. It'll, that's what it looked like after the treatment. So there you can see there's quite a quite a bit of a difference there be, between the two. Um, as far as uh, species are, are concerned, there's uh, uh, on the anthro end of it. It's uh, we've got our population of sage grouse there, uh, the anthro sage grouse population, and so there's six about 634 acres there. Uh, that's on anthro that'll benefit sage grouse and the, those two units, the sage grouse unit or, or the sage grouse use that those units extensively. Um, elk and deer are also uh, extensively extensively use the area, both on the anthro side and the aviniquin side. Um, on the anthro side, we've got a lot of pronghorn up there as well um, that will be benefiting from the project. Um, as far as the, the cost goes, it's 118,000, just a little over 118,000 for the total cost of the project. The Forest Service is kicking in a little over 63,000 um, for that. And then the remainder we were hoping to get uh, through WRI or Habitat Camp Council. Um, so I think that's, that's pretty much it. Yeah, any questions on this one? Good. You have to maintain some of these treatments, you know, years later, and and uh, you know, for a little, little comparatively little cost for a lot of acreage. Um, looks like we've got TCP money on this too. Uh, Forest Service is kicking in most of it, um, or half of it anyway. They so, put forty thousand awards yesterday. Yes. Go to Tuesday. Yeah. So all that was remaining was that 14.7, so I just put it all in him. That's fun to want to bang for your buck on this one. Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve it. Second it. Okay, we have a motion from Tyler to approve and a second from Kobe. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Okay, motion passes. All right, thanks, Bob. Yeah, thanks, guys. <clears throat> Okay, uh, next one, uh, 6728 Bitter Creek Habitat Improvement. Yeah. Tom? All right. Yep, I got it. Uh, so my name is Tom Platero. I'm the impact analysis biologist here in the Northeast region. Uh, this is the first project of this type that I'm, uh, that I'm submitting. So I'm anticipating some feedback and I'm more than open to hearing uh, what you guys think about it. So uh, please keep that in mind. Um, so this project, just in our monitoring of WMAs this last summer, uh, I was uh, I was monitoring it. Well, we had attempted to monitor it a couple of times, but we got shut down by weather. Um, it was mainly Clint, Samson, Corey, Mathis, and I that thought about this. Uh, so Clint, just being on the ground in the past, has suggested that we come in there and take care of some of the sagebrush in the area that's really overgrown, really decadent, not leaving a lot of space for the understory. Um, so this proposal is about 130 acres. We're hoping to go in there with a harrow and um, pass over and seed for grasses and forbs to help support elk in the area. Um, the initial idea was hopefully to benefit, because it is on summer range for mule deer and elk, but looking at wildlife track, we uh, don't have a lot of deer actually utilizing the WMA itself. So that's the primary reason that this is just specific to elk. Um, chances are deer would benefit from this as it's in their range, but um, that's kind of the rationale behind that. Uh, but this is a bit of a pilot project. We're hoping that 
by establishing this, showing success, getting that understory established and supporting the summer range, uh, hopefully we'd be able to apply it to more range, to more area within the boat cliffs. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, if you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer. Okay. Thanks, Tom. Any questions for Tom on this one? I'll move to approve it then. Okay. We have a motion from Randy to approve. Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay, we have a second from Craig. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed? Any opposed say no. Just a, okay. just, just a question on this one. This this one looks like a, a great um, ECP project too. Um, did we just decide not to shop it to the groups or? Um, was it? This is the one I asked you about. Daniel said no. I just I just looking at this one, it just feels like it'd be a great a great ECP one. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually I think I asked both of them and Neither of them responded on the AIM, but I talked to Daniel in person. <laughs> <laughs> but to give them credit, it was on a Friday. <laughs> wow, how could you not cross in this group? <laughs> Apparently, you don't cross out. Uh, for the, any of the rest of us go down, is there any other <laughs> I tried to respond to Allison's emails as quickly as I have never done anything else, I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay. Do Is a there other funding that can be used for this other than Habitat Council money? It's it's a great Habitat Council project too. I, that's I, I just I just yeah. It just I think that's kind of the way I view it. It's a wildlife management area, I and mean, that's a big part of what Habitat Council sure. is. Is funding some of our own projects at home. That's good. Fair enough. But yes, we would accept any other additional funding if other groups were interested in this project. <laughs> Intent. Yeah. More than happy. I spent all our money on Tuesday. <laughs> More than happy to entertain that thought. Sorry, I didn't mean to do your L. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> hey. All right, my bad. <laughs> it's all right. Okay, looks like we're good on that. Um, oh, thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Tom. Um, so that's it for our Northeast region projects. Um, we're going to jump to central region and we're cooking through this really good. So, um, so don't let us down. I can slow it down. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So our first project is 6566 Stansbury Mountains, big game habitat improvement. And yeah, you kind of stand kind of close to here right? to get a good microphone. Yeah. yeah. All right. Glad to be here. Um, this is a uh, Robbie Edgel. I can't. Oh, let me get. In. There you go. I'm not looking at my belly. <laughs> <laughs> Just speak right. loud so they okay. can hear you. Uh, Robbie Edgel, habitat restoration biologist for the Central Region, and uh, this is a project that's about the fourth phase of work that that I've done, and then before me, Allison. Did quite a bit of work out there, uh, working with a lot of the private landowners. Um, so this phase, uh, we're doing some uh, uh, more bull hog work on the forest on the east side of the Stansburys and uh, Juniper and Pinion uh, areas. It's very thick. Um, phase three, Juniper, very not a lot of understory. So we will be seeding uh, and then aerially seeding and then bull hogging. And we'll be doing some work this spring if the snow ever melts uh, to the south of this as well. Um, so we pretty much after this next year, we'll be um, almost done with all the forest service that we can get access to. It's pretty steep country there, but um, very limited uh, 
summer range and so this is kind of a, a summer range on the edges of summer range improvement as well and then uh, Davenport Creek you can see a little line there uh, want to do some uh, potential BDA work or other stream improvement riparian habitat improvement just trying to keep more water on the mountain and uh, more green vegetation a lot of these desert mountains don't have a lot of your traditional aspen summer range and so uh, most of the aspen is down in these riparian areas and in the green summer vegetation so whatever we can do to improve those riparian areas i think will be uh, very beneficial and then on the uh, uh, west side of the mountain range we've had a lot of fires that have uh, taken out all the sagebrush component and so we've been working with the blm for several years now to get a large NEPA done and we've completed basically all of the BLM is cleared with cultural and NEPA and so now we're good to go and we started planting. Um, this just highlight this photo is just highlighting that there's bighorn sheep on this mountain range. Um, uh, like I said we'll be doing bullhog work and this wildlife tracker just showing the area where we're planting the, the shrubs proving that winter range for both the uh, mule deer and bighorn sheep and pronghorn. And this is what we've planted this year. Uh, started doing, we're doing a study with Scott Jensen uh, with the USDA and uh, looking at different size plants and seed sources. And I mostly focus on sagebrush this, this phase, but hope to do other phases. Uh, we also did, uh, we're doing the idea is to do some plot like blocks of shrub plantings as well as we're using the Mad Max to seed and then doing green strips around it to protect it so in the future it doesn't uh, burn, hopefully. I'm um, just showing the riparian area there. Davenport Creek and just more of that. What's cool is we've got the soil moisture data loggers and so we're able to, we're trying to identify when is the best time to what is that uh, key soil moisture content? Because we're finding that's key to having survival on our shrubs. So. And then I threw this in there just to highlight that we are putting in uh, four big boss tank guzzlers uh, this year with this phase of the project as well. Uh, was that beetles that took out those pines in that area? Fire. Oh, was fire? Yeah, sorry, yeah. Was it fire? Yeah. 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 And then there's lots of data out there, turkeys, um, and there, this is the area where we, where we will be bull hugging. Any questions? So the Bonneville cutthroat trout, are they in Davenport? They are not. There's nothing in there right now. I'd love to. I've been working with Cody Edwards from Forest Service, and he thinks it's a... It's, uh, might be a little high in the sky, but because there's not a lot of water. But I'm hoping, yeah, I was going to say, yeah. So, it's, it's intermittent at yeah, best. Yeah. But then definitely on south of there and, and north and south Willow that's on the docket for future bio cutthroat release. Daniel, I didn't write it down. Could you uh, go to the finances and just see the breakdown? So is it for, for the up one, is it for the checker or what turkey. Is, which are in the turkeys? And I'm curious, I don't I know the area a little bit, not a lot. Uh, what if any horse grass population we have in there? You know, I, I don't know on horse grass. Are there? Okay. I, 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 I was <laughs> thinking there. hoping down along those rivers that yeah. you got some rust. There. The blues are there. Yeah. Thank you for calling them blues. <laughs> I will never stop saying that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. My hope would be to get fish in Davenport eventually. It looks like you've got a lot of funding partners on this one too, and the Forest Service is kicking in. Yeah, yeah. that's that's key. It's good to see you on a project with Forest is kicking in a whole bunch of money. Tyler, I assume this one ranks. Yeah, this one ranks well. This is part of that that big national priority landscape funding that Daniel talked about for the UN and Wasatch Cash. Okay. But yeah, this is a good project. And, and this area gets a lot of use, doesn't it? From people? Yeah. Yeah. 
and the Forest Service is working through kind of a recreational plan to try to improve all of that. I'm excited that you're looking at methods at while you're while you're planning shrubs. So you're looking and evaluating and seeing right, or are we successful? What do we need to improve? Like it's a lot of effort and a lot of money and a lot of failure at times. Yeah. So yeah. so if we're gonna do it, let's do it the best way we can. Yeah. Steve, you have a question? Oh, I was just going to make a motion, but it's hard to read the situation and not cut somebody off being on a computer. So I'll make a motion that we pass it. Okay, we have a motion from Steve. We have a second? I'll second it. Or, no, go, go for it. And, it's all you. All right, all right. Okay, we have a motion from Steve. We have a second from Kobe. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say no. Okay, motion passes. Just wanted to clarify, you've got the, the contractors to plant the seedlings that you've already grown from last time as a 22. That's for this fall though, right? You need that funding still. Uh, Cause it's that 21,650. I think it's to plant the plants that we're growing now. Yeah. That so one. you still need that, right? So we could change that to 24. Oh, I don't know why that's 22. So. Just wanted to make sure we got that. Yeah, that's uh, it's 24 now. Yeah, it should be okay. Thanks. That wasn't the funding number, that was the year 2024. Okay, all right, cool. Um, next project, uh, 6564 Mill Creek Watershed Restoration Project. Go ahead. And I don't know where it's going to hurt. It'll catch up. <laughs> Um, so this one's it's exciting to see the Forest Service. They're really uh, being aggressive with getting work going on the Wasatch Front. And uh, we started in Parley's and we're now moving southward into Mill Creek. And uh, at the mouth of the canyon, uh, we want to do some more of the Myrtle Spurge uh, treatment like we've done up north. And then moving up the canyon, uh, forest health projects, um, mostly lop and scatter and lop and pile and burn methods, just because it's so steep, you can't get machinery in there. And then they'll come in and burn the piles the next year in the winter. And, and a lot of acreage is in high elevation and thick conifer that'll hopefully turn into more aspen. Open meadow stands will be great for big game and forest grouse, uh, blue grouse, and, <laughs> and uh, um, which benefit, and then we're doing a BDAs. They did do a huge reintroduction of barnacle cutthroat trout in here, and spent a lot of money. And we've been working with our aquatic section, and we're doing BDAs kind of above uh, where most of the cutthroat are at, so we don't have any potential negative impacts. But I think it will increase a lot of that shallow area into bigger pools that should help help them out up higher. So just kind of an example, BDA, I'm sure you've all seen them for this elements of Park City. Uh, kind of shows what the forest is like, the conifers out competing. That's just example photos of what, what we'll be doing. And it can look really awesome. Just uh, help save that aspen from getting choked out. A wildlife tracker, we don't have a ton of collar data there, but definitely use the mouth canyon and then they go into the golf course in Salt Lake City <laughs> um, and then the moose that's love probably still too soon <laughs> yeah. I can do it because I spent two nights there watching them so <laughs> I'm just getting that game um, and that's just showing the Myrtle Spurge really hope that we're going to be spraying that we're switching from mechanical to more herbicide Hopefully, get some good good results on that. So what you're saying, Robbie, is you're hoping this project will help keep them off the golf course. Yes, yeah. that's what I heard. <laughs> <laughs> There's not like 15 feet of snow. Up top of the okay. It, is there? There was a lot of work being done on that um, private piece of property through there, um, mm -hmm. mostly on the stream and stuff. Any any concerns on the upkeep or? Anything in there? Um, it's a county property. Was it county? Oh, okay. yeah, I thought it was property. Yeah, so we're working with the county, and it's way up high. So definitely will help summer range. <laughs> that that squares county. Yep. Okay. 
gonna go with Waco County in there. Okay. And we'll we're working with the Forest Service too to continue in future phases going up stream. Any questions on this one? Big project, big Forest Service money on this one again, looks like NPL money. Um, yeah, our ask was only 19. I would second that. And, and um, I feel like those splits are right too. I mean, it is a big game area, but it doesn't hold the same importance as some of these other areas do. So I yeah, feel like it's there. Yeah. Okay, so we have a motion from Tyler and a second from Kobe. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, any, any opposed say no. Motion passes. All right. Next project 65 65. Carter Canyon watershed. And it's just, just to the north, a lot of the same same concepts, treating that middle spurge at the mouth of the canyon. And really, we're just trying to keep that from spreading everywhere. Uh, it's, it spread really quickly, just started out in people's backyards and it's just going. And it's aggressive and outcompetes other stuff and toxic sap. So, not, not a good thing that we want out there. And I feel like where it's early enough that we can hopefully stop its progress um, and then doing some more lot pile and burn up higher in lambs canyon doing some where we've done some mastication along i-80 you may have seen we've thinned out the oak brush there mostly for fire prevention but should also benefit by opening and regenerating that oak brush for the big game and the forest grouse too um, and then some BDA work in Parley's Creek. There's cutthroat trout in there as well. And we've worked with uh, Mike Slater and his only comment was to stay above where they do the um, egg gathering. So, and partnering with lots of partners on both these projects with from the city and NGOs. Only have one nasty letter so far. <laughs> Gonna meet with them on Monday, so hopefully, hopefully it's a where it's so visible, a good opportunity to educate people and get more people supporting. This is shows the need for the fire reduction risk of the project. We've had two fires in there in the last couple of years, right there in Parley's. And just kind of show we, that's yeah, winter came early as you know, and we pushed our contract to keep going as much as we could, and and. Uh, there may be a little bit of ground disturbance that we want to seed, reseed, and that's sort of that's in the product as well. Not that worried about it, but good partner with the landowner. It looks like some more forage money on this, copyright monies. Probably good on this one, right? It's the highest by far they did. Yeah, it is. I'm calling BS on the species list. Mm, let's see that. <laughs> I think there's a lot in there. So I will say, our, our there probably has that. been one there at some point. Yeah, yeah. That guy's been moving around. Non D. Like, yeah, is there a whole, the whole amount? If there's a whole, there's a whole ring there, all of this. So my oh, partner wow. on the Forest Service kind of, he just got the like, the list of the Utah Heritage Database and went off of everything that was there in the history. Of, so there might be grizzly there in there. <laughs> I just got photos yesterday of, of one in, in Logan. Uh, yeah, catch area it, somewhere. Yeah, it, 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 it totally. Did it look like it had a collar on it? <laughs> 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 you couldn't tell, but from what I guess, it didn't look like it was the same one. It didn't look like it was a collar. Yeah. And it did look like a Wolverine. It, it did. Lighter yes. Yeah. Yeah. It was awesome. Probably yes. could be good habitat up there. <laughs> okay. Any, any other questions on this project? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, proposal. It's mentioned that it's okay. There's a lot of sport fish, and I'll call them non-game fish, and they're non-game aquatic species benefit. Um, but yet, it's 90-10 big game up one. You know that that's quite right. That was probably mine. Mine just. Wild well, guess. <laughs> Let's see what Steve has to say here. He's got a question. I think. Um, my, my main question was that that uh, that weed that's coming out of people's backyards. Uh, did your project last year 
get funded and how did that go if it did on the spraying of those weeds? Yeah, so we're gonna we're starting that this spring. So we'll be spraying that, but we have uh, pulled it mechanically for two years before. And we definitely have seen a reduction, but um, it you remove the plant and it kind of releases the nutrients for the seed bank. And so we're getting a lot of regrowth that way. And so we're going to more of an herbicide and we're going to be playing with some pre-emergence to the help with that seed. But, and that was, that was poisonous if I remember right, correct? That yeah, it's, yeah, it'll, it can blind you if you get the sap in your eyes and burned your skin. The guys that did the mechanical removal had a quite a time at it. But. <laughs> Do we, um, is there anything out there on how long this is going to take to, to, to really suppress it? Yeah, I think it's about eight years for the first, the seed's viable. So, so. Oh, it's, uh, that sucks. But as far as weeds go, that's not that bad. <laughs> it's not the worst one, for sure. So you brought it up on the uh, breakout. Should there be some going towards the sports fish? Yeah, I'm trying to go through what the overall cost of things that are related to fish and aquatic species. Mm -hmm. It looks like it's about thirteen thousand total out of the various different line items. They're related to the BDAs and all that type of stuff. Um, and then Hobel Zoo's putting forward and up Hobel Zoo. That would be for probably boil tub tracking stuff or mm -hmm. patriation. Uh, Sageland Collaborative is putting toward $6,000 toward that. So there's like $7,000 hanging out there, kind of funded by alternate routes that probably is appropriate for Habitat Council out of the 20000 So whatever that equates to, what, a third, 30%, something like that. I bet Stephen I will take that. Okay, so I'm, what are you I'm good if you are, Andy. I'm proposing that 30% of the project be funded for sport fish, non game fish, make it 15 15. And non game fish is non game aquatics because yeah. wildlife doesn't include snails. Is <laughs> so, take 30% off big game and put 15 in sports fish. However, you guys want to that extract it out of the other yeah. two. That's because, yeah, I mean, because up one definitely is represented there. We'd be getting benefit out of it. Does that make you happy, Steve? Oh, yeah, because I'm under budget this year or over budget. <laughs> we are too. Along with everybody else. Hey. So we have a first change. So we have a motion to call on the second. Okay, we have a motion from Nene and a second from Keith. Andy or Richard? Oh, no. Well, we stare at me, so I figure I'd better <clears throat> okay. step up. Well, so this sounds really good. We have a motion from Randy. We have a second from Andy. It almost rhymes. <laughs> All in favor, say hi. 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 Any opposed, say no. Okay, the motion passes. Next project, uh, 6584 Ephraim Watershed Restoration Phase 4. All right, this has only really been a great project. It's been a lot of kind of our first uh, stab at higher elevation work on our side of the mountain, at least on the forest. We've got about four years of other phases. I don't know if you can turn on adjacent projects. So, uh, this is in this year, we'll be doing uh, more work in the New Canyon. Um, area and last year we'd uh, go to the photos we did uh, some slash piles so basically just running uh, perpendicular to the slope running lines cutting down trees and just failing them and we also did uh, piles that will be burned and doing some more cut and piling and then uh, BDA work as well and then so they do the slash lines and then they, it helps carry the fire so we have prescribed burn plan. Um, so it's exciting to, to see and that's kind of what it looks like where they've slashed the, the trees in a line. Um, so that's the high elevation forest work and then like I said more stream work and then down on our WMA we want to do some more shrub planting. 
Uh, next picture will just show how fast they're growing. These, these older plants, we plant grow really fast and go to seed. Really, within a couple of years, are actually beneficial for, for wildlife to eat. That's that last picture shows what we've done so far out there on our Black Hill wildlife management area. And it's, it's fun to see year after year, it just adds up. And we'll kind of finish that off with this year with that, that area, with this phase of the project. And just shows kind of from Wildlife Tracker the, the use. We don't have a ton of collar data, but definitely heavy winter game use. And part of this project also, I'm asking for money for uh, gates and some fencing to um, my, for my uh, SIP project. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but it's to get a, a revised access plan for Black Hill wildlife management area and do a winter closure. So I'm working with the county and a lot of different users to reduce the trail use out there. We've got a lot of mountain bikes are getting more popular, and so new mountain bikes are being, trails are being created. We've always had dirt bike use out there, but now we're getting them all together and kind of trying to reduce the number of trails. And so this project asking for some money to help enforce the winter closure with some gates that will keep people from being able to access it. So. Cool questions for Robbie on this one. Looks like a lot of WRI money on this. <clears throat> I'd still put money on it though. The sportsman's groups put money on it. If I was Robbie, I'd start looking for what do you want to do first if we need you to okay. spread it out. One of the things I looked at when I was deciding how much um, the 60000 that Habitat or the ECP uh, raised on Tuesday, there's that one practice of like 500 acres of conifer slash. Um, that's 125,000, so I was kind of trying to hit close to that amount. And so I. Does he have any burning included in this? Or the, um, um, just pile of burning. The two we talked about first, we want to burn. Mm hmm. So I would say the, the fire needs to happen this year because we've got already prepped it. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. is, is thin and pile the best method? When it's 800 bucks an acre, could you bull hog it instead? Where it's steep, so yeah. it's real steep. Okay, any other questions? On or, this? So this, just can you bring up the map again so I just understand exactly some of the details of the project better? So there's some of this taking place on the uh, spring, so that spring city stuff could maybe be pulled, but I'd say the new canyon stuff that right there is a high, high priority. But this is a it's a really it's a big long project between stuff you're doing on Black Hill, stuff you're doing on um, Forest Service. Forest Service. <clears throat> hey, good luck on the Black Hill stuff. Like, I mean, it's so hard to believe that we needed to reduce access and use of that property for years and as a person who's part of the first were you there <laughs> in that I'd say probably go for it. Yeah, I have some guitar and feathers, but I'm gonna just watch this one. We've had a few <laughs> meetings that have gone okay, so I'm it's hopeful a, but it's a super it's fun stick to your guns man. Yeah <laughs> we have our support. Yeah. Stick your support guns don't let them take your guns and shoot you. Yeah. Leave <laughs> <laughs> your guns at home and run a nice place and bring food. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it is one that gets, I would say it's to the level of abused uh, by the public. Like it's, yeah. So if we look at the, the prescribed fire portion, it looks like it's about a hundred grand. So that's Which was still, already, this is probably where we invested already to prepare for that yeah. fire. Yeah, so, so that, that, would, that would still be in that same range. Of, so so how much did money? ECP, how much did, 60. 60. So this is. And we need 100 to do the fire? That would be just what I heard. Mm -hmm. So. And then that doesn't do anything on the WMA? Uh, yeah, no. what, what are you thinking from? from I thought it scored. It's, it's hard to say on this one. It is like right on the. 
boundary of where we think we're going to get to. So that's why I said if we give funding to it, I doubt we'll give all of it. Can you just come up with more funding, Tyler? <laughs> <laughs> I've been trying. Yeah. That's well, I just, in this case, where the there's already been it. prep work done, you know, and, and when we we'll get to that point, we'll we'll talk about it and see where where if, funding. If we give them what they're asking for from Habitat Council, they fund the fires, um, and hopefully they get the rest because it feels like a really good project to me. And if you only knew how many projects we've done prep work on and still can't fund the actual treatments. Um, <laughs> it's only money time to try to check. <laughs> I will say these guys are good about actually getting this the burns. Yeah. <laughs> okay. They're not ones to hold on to prescribe burn money for them. Okay, do we have a motion on this one then? What is it just to break down really quick? I just want to look at it. Ninety ten. That's probably fair. Mm -hmm. I'll make the motion we pass it. All right, thanks, Steve. Do I have a second? I'll second. Stop looking at me. <laughs> okay, we have a motion from Steve. We have a second from Randy. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, any opposed say no. Okay, motion passes. Okay. Last one for me for this. All right, so 12 miles, 6536. Go ahead. I will say, like, a few of the first Habitat Council meetings, I didn't even come, so you haven't heard from too much. Of the That's Keep coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all good. This means that I'm focusing on big. Uh, yep. So, uh, this, is this is a 12 mile. Um, so we've, this one's been awesome. The sportsmen really came together to get the funding for the NEPA to get going on this. And it's awesome. We're still actually uh, spending that money and getting a lot of acres uh, surveyed through cultural and working with uh, the Forest Service. So we've basically got the NEPA done for 12 Mile Canyon and we are clearing acreage in Six Mile, Mont Manti, and the uh, muddy headwater the muddy so it's been pretty awesome to get this much area cracked and going but this will be the fifth, second year of all the <coughs> treatments in mile. and we'll be doing using a feller buncher where it's not too steep so uh it's the four service feller buncher and then uh, doing the cut and pile stuff where it's more more inaccessible and and also areas where they want to do logging in the future where there's not, you know, who knows when that'll happen. Um, and then uh, stream restoration, kind of went a little crazy and highlighted all of it, but definitely is a lot of potential there for uh, riparian habitat improvement in uh, uh, Aspen. So we'll be, be doing some BDA work and then also uh, we'll be reintroducing, not reintroducing, there's beavers there, but uh, getting beavers and a lot of our uh, a lot of the ponds up there that I was dry down, our aquatic section's been requesting that we, we do that and raise the water so they can uh, let brook trout, brook trout go in those ponds that have dried up since the beavers have been removed. And I'm working heavily with the irrigation companies, Mayfield and Gunnison, and meeting with them again in a couple weeks. And they are working with an uh, engineering firm who's doing uh, a piping uh, project to have tried to reduce the landslide risk. And honestly, we might see some bad landslides in there this year. Um, but uh, but there's some funding from the NRCS through that, and we've partnered with them. And there's potentially about 20 million to go to coach treatments in the future. So that's exciting. Um, and then down lower on our WMA, on the 12 mile WMA, uh, we've done some bull hog work this last year. And then we're asking for some cultural money to get more areas done in the future, with bull hog. And then the plan is to kind of bull hog that lower area. And then we'll uh, burn, prescribe burn up to the, the ridge line on Florida Mountain there. And uh, this one, there's. 
collared all these deer on the winter range and then none of them decided the summer in, <laughs> in the 12 mile area so i didn't have a lot of color data in there but this was one and just kind of hung out you can see on the periphery of the thick conifer so it's kind of showing hopefully as we treat that but we'll increase that habitat um, that's an example of the bbas that was one of the bbas where we have issues with or concerns from folks with water issues we can just leave that gap in it and it isn't technically impounding the, the water, so it's a workaround. And this is what we did last year in Columbus, a feller puncture example. Cool. Questions for this project? Looking forward to it. They're doing good work up there. I'm going to take that there and see it. I think you're right. You'll see some landslide movement. Yeah, probably. maybe we'll wait. <laughs> it doesn't have great geology. <laughs> but we, they, we've been forced to stay away from the high risk landslide area. So I was looking at the the next project. So this is a creek watershed restoration. I was wondering if we should. Hopefully that doesn't become Thistle Lake again. <laughs> yeah. It's a big BDA. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the snowpack this year is equivalent to kind of what it was when that happened. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, okay. Probably not good. Do we have a motion on this one? I'll make a motion. Okay. Motion from Tyler. Do we have a second? I'll second. Second from Craig. All in favor, say aye. 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 Nine. No. Okay. Motion passes. All right. Sixty-five thirty-nine Thistle Creek Watershed Restoration. Mark, go ahead. Are we gonna stand? Okay. Just close enough to this. Kind of oh, so that it's just so Steve can hear you. Can you put my ownership up on this? Um, this project is finishing up. A couple of, had a couple phases in this watershed. Um, working on some of our WBAs. Um, there's lots of moving parts. This one in the far north on our lake, Fort W. Bay, we're going to be planting some shrubs with Mad Max seeding and planting shrub seedlings. And south, we've got some cleanup on some bullhog work. That's a bullhog section. The line to the right is a fence, mile of fence. And uh, that squiggly line on the south is a goal you want to repair, keep. From eroding, and then further south is a little full out portion of it. That's BDA section of the stream, and the bottom is another full out portion. If you wouldn't mind pulling up that documents PDF. So this year we're going to, we got a problem getting our cleared fast enough to get our full out going that fall. So we're going to clear the arc first. And then bulldog next summer, so we don't have this problem. We had that problem in 12 mile last year. So this is we're up on Spencer Fork looking over Highway 89, looking to the east. And this is showing you some of the bulldog work we've done in the past uh, two phases. Further to the right is kind of a duller color, um, is our phase one, and the stuff that's kind of light tan is phase two. And phase three is going to pick up any of the stuff that we want that's left over. Next slide. And uh, basically, that's the bullhog we're, we're going to be using. That's some of the phase two right there. You see some deer right there in those trees. Um, for some reason, they love to get in there after we bullhogged and eat deer branches in the ground. I'm not sure why. But we, we went a ton of deer in this area. Um, the other side of the highway burned in the Woodhall fire, and then the Full Creek fire burned a bunch more. So there's not a lot of shrubs on that side of the highway. So this side on the east side of 89 is really important. Next slide. Whose bullhog is that? Well, that's the bullhog that we did. That's not our bullhog. I'm just saying that's a, from the phase two. Um, this is the area that's left over we want to do with. This is our last draw that we made. Um, and that's where we're going to clear those areas. And then next year, we'll identify where we want to bullhog on that piece. 
Um, out of those 410 acres, it's probably going to be a lot less than that. It's going to be going on just the places where it makes sense. Uh, next slide. And that shows you kind of the phases there. And the phase three is that blue, blue section. On the right is a, uh, kind of what it looked like before. Um, and kind of what those trees look like. And the understory is some places it's still intact, some places not so much. Next slide. Um, further south on that hilltop conservation easement, uh, this is the top pictures before we did any treatments. Um, the left side is after treatment, a uh, full size bulldog on the left. And you see that fence line in the middle? That kind of separates phase one and phase two. Phase two on the south, we used a, our in house smaller bulldog. And that, now we want to go back and finish up what we couldn't get to. Next slide. Um, full size of on the north end, that's what it looked like afterwards. And then we use our smaller bullhog and that's what it looked like afterwards there. Um, it does find in smaller trees, like old chainings where the trees aren't full, full size, works really good. Uh, next slide. And for this property, this is what's left in phase three, about 390 acres. And pretty much most of that is phase three juniper with very little understory. Uh, most of those, Pinions we left in place would be taken all as um, juniper out in those treatment polygons. Um, okay, next slide. That's kind of showing you some pictures before and after. That's our in house machine there. And uh, next slide. We're also going to be doing some BDAs in two creeks, this creek and Rock Creek. And this is from phase two, I guess, really, right? Yeah. Um, so the BDAs, I hope they're still there after the spring runoff. And who knows? Um, anyway, um, really improves stream connectivity and cool habitat for our native species. Next slide. Um, this gully basically starts right at the forest boundary and it gets deeper and deeper. And it's, it's intermittent. It just doesn't have water in the all year round, but it's still actively cutting. So we want to put some check dams in there to keep, stop that from getting worse. Um, next slide. And unfortunately, I didn't take a picture going upstream or downstream, but this is our fence line going across. You can see how deep that is. Um, we did some work like this in past treatment. I think it's the next slide. Um, some check dams. It's got a, a series of check dams. Water comes down, fills it up, and then it exits around one side and it goes to the next one and slows that water down. Um, that's kind of what we're planning on doing. And we'll be using our in-house machine with our heavy equipment crew or our maintenance personnel can, can operate that machine. Next slide. And Manbacks will be planting a couple thousand shrubs on the Lake Fork WMA and some private land adjacent to us. Uh, basically splitting seed on the ground. The, the green box puts down bitter brush seed at two inches in depth and the yellow box or the track drops that seed that we want to put on top. Um, and we'll put seed through that. Then we'll go back and plant a certain part of that with seedlings. Like this is a volunteer project, and we'll probably do this as volunteers. Next slide. And that one mile fence, um, we're going to put money in here to buy materials for that. This is our fence between us and the forest, and it's very old and fallen down, probably built by pioneers back in the day. But uh, we're going to make a deal with our the permittee of the forest to build the fence and do some grazing in, in exchange on our side of the fence. Next slide. So objectives to clear the arc for the whole hog treatment next year. And in that whole hog, we're going to reduce juniper cover less than 10% in the treatment polygons. Retain most of those pinions. Um, we're going to increase our grass and plant form cover dramatically. Improve our stream connectivity with our VDAs. Reduce gully erosion with our check downs. Scalp and seed 2500 shrub seedlings and replace the mile fence. This picture at the bottom shows you a trend study on phase two uh, before and after. So uh, there's still quite a bit of, on this, on this certain area, still quite a bit of bitter brush in the end story and other shrubs. Um, and this is taken after uh, first growing season. Uh, it's going to look a lot better after this year, a lot more sure you've got. Go back and repeat that photograph, but you can open that up. So. Hopefully, move those deer that are really heavily using that area to the north a little bit to spread them out. Next slide. That's basically the budget. I wish our clearance was today expensive.
but when I look at the, the funding on this one, I'm, you don't see how we don't have a breakdown. Perhaps I don't see them. Yeah, so that's what I'm just trying to figure out. I just can't read my mind. We can. <laughs> um, I, had, I put 10 grand down, 95% um, big game, 5% upland game. I think the PDAs are primarily for pitchmen to quite a cap in there, right? Yeah, I don't think there's figures in the stream now, right? Is there anything? Do we shock into that? Yeah, in phase two? Other side jobs. It's listed up there. Yeah, the so that was seven five hundred bucks for those. Do you want to put five percent non-game fish? What's then? the overall habitat for bass? Ten thousand. It was ninety-five yeah. and five. Now, yeah, I originally had it ninety-five and five on the spreadsheet. Yeah, five percent would be appropriate. Now, we've been working closely with the new quotas. Yeah. Okay. And then next year, Mark, we we see a project coming back asking to. We'll to probably be the for, for the for the bull hog, and we'll probably do another set of BDA work. Um, and what else? Oh, we have more shrubs. So we planted a ton on the other side of the highway on the Spencer Fork piece. Mm -hmm. We'll continue that, but now we're going to move up on the burn section of Lake Fork and get some shrubs back in there too. Yeah. So you're and probably. since the deer eat all the ones you planted, we'll have to put cages on them. <laughs> all the seeds you planted by the black hill. Yeah. Did they? No, I, I found where they hammered them. They just hammered them. Oh, nice. I think they eat them all as soon as they got. Open down the ground. Yeah, so yeah you'll, see, you'll see ones that are kind of protected by another plant. And they actually grew yeah. everywhere they weren't there. Yeah. So all that, just yeah. all that scalp work you did was for not. You're welcome. In that cold, snowy weather you were in, like that picture of that. <laughs> okay. so before you sit down, yeah. the turkey box is checked. Um, I, I don't know this area, so, so you tell me what what's going on with the up one. And how's it benefiting? There's a ton of turkeys there. Yeah. Is there? Yeah. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. the whole belt, the whole canyon down that canyon is full of turkeys, and they're spread. Okay, that, that, that's what I need so, to know. Yeah. yeah, they go from that highway, they creek there all the way over to Deer Fork. So there's quite a few. Well, some some around the Manti, mm -hmm. and then come back down. Okay. Not in those BDAs, please. Okay. Okay. You can with those turkeys too. Stop! <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, no, no, the no. <laughs> Okay, do we have a motion on this one? Yeah, I'll, I'll make a motion. Kobe, okay. be quiet. <laughs> okay, we have a motion from Steve. You can second it. I'll, I'll second, it. I'll second that. Angie says I can. Okay. We have a second from Kobe with permission. <laughs> All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed say no. Okay, motion passes. Okay, moving right along. We're on we're getting there. It says looks like three more, but there's actually four more projects on here. So 5942 Sand Pitch Mountains Collaborative. All right. Uh, I'm Jacob Hall. I'm the farmville biologist for DWR and NRCS in central Utah. I'm presenting this project on behalf of Brant Hallows, with BLM, who's the project manager. Um, this was two projects last year. Um, we've combined them and made it bigger and better, brought some more partners to the table for this year. Um, so it's now a watershed scale project um, with a lot of partners, uh, a lot of agencies coming together to make this work. Um, a lot of pieces to it. Um, there's prescribed fire, some mop and scatter, um, some stream restoration work, um, and then some protection for some springs in the area as well. Um, so um, we have two landowners. Um, part of this is on private land. We have two landowners that are both signed up um, and have will have applied for funding for the through the NRCS. So that's good to see. They've been great to work with. Um, as far as the allocation goes, I think it's listed as 100% big game. This was the number three turkey project for the region, um, just to uh, mention that if you wanted to make any changes there. But. Okay. 
man, Matt Christensen, before she fired State Line, has been great. Um, helping us figure out the prescribed fire aspect of this and writing the burn plan, things like that. So, um, I mentioned turkeys, but it does it has a lot of um, benefit for deer and elk as well. It's a pretty big project. Pretty big WRI. Don't come that one. Yeah, I think the thing with my goal this year for this one is to pay for all the prep work when you hold the fire for next year. So the fire is 1.8 million of the total. So it's somewhere like 800 and something thousand for everything else. BLM, yeah, BLM's bringing 319 of that. And you're paying for mostly the office cash? Yeah, the office cash. It's probably going to have to cost a lot of scatterings, but I'm hoping a lot of scatter about 100 bucks an acre, too. You can't have it be your top rate turkey project, though, and not ask for some. Yeah. Or you can. Well, you can. <laughs> And, that, and that's fine, because at the end of this, the truth is, no matter what it says on percentages, we're going to have to readjust and allocate funding on the other side. But it would be good to at least know which projects have which type of, if that's represented in the funding, then we can have real discussions about, all right, how do we want to handle this? Those are my thoughts. I think we need to build our own DWR. Prescribed burn crew is for the fire charge a lot of money to burn for us. <laughs> There's a bug. Like you can use a drone now to <laughs> light them off. Of course, I think, I think they're planning on using that. On that. I think this is like a type one fire. Though, if I remember talking about the regional team meeting, this is a pretty complicated fire. You don't really need your own fire team, you just need like a troop of Boy Scouts. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty complicated fire <laughs> <team. laughs> Okay, any other questions on this one? <laughs> what was the NRCS component going to be on this one? Yeah, uh, you know, and I don't think we changed it to be fair if it is a number three turkey project. I need to put some money on there. Okay. Thank you, Randy. Put 10% on there. Okay. Okay. I probably want to make that part of the motion. Sure. I'll make that is uh, so a 90 10 split, uh, big gain up one, and then a uh, move to approve the project. Same motion from Randy. I'll second it. Okay, we have a second from Steve. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say no. Okay. Motion passes. Thank you. Okay. Last one for Central Region, 6537 Central Mountains. We go for the range. Restoration. Uh, so this one's a shrub planting mostly. And then, uh, of course, with us, uh, teamed up with us. And if I sit to do some uh, oak brush and juniper thing on the and if I can in there at the bottom. So, so oak brush thing, juniper thing. Nephi Canyon, and then uh, shrub planting on our Santa Quint WMA and on our Spencer Fork WMA that uh, Mark was talking about is across the highway from our last and draw WMA uh, that we had all those fires that we lost a lot of the shrub. So it's our Santa Quint WMA. So we've done about five years of these plantings now. We've gotten really good success with the, the seedlings and now we're just working to try to get a better uh, lower the cost and, and keep our survival up. So it kind of shows the, the oak brush area there that we're working in. And I uh, see that's in our Sacra and WMA there. And this cool picture looking out at what we did last year. So we're going bigger and we just want to keep going south out there. And, we we'll use the Mad Max dozer, like I said, plants, and then also removes that grass competition, so it, it helps with the survival. 
We found the seed. The seed that we found with that is kind of hit or miss. And you know, if you still are dealing with the issue where they graze it off, they graze that way. But to hedge, hedge our bets by doing the seedlings as well as the seed. Are we reducing grazing on some of these farm properties? Yeah. Uh, on this one, on the Santa Quinn, we have cattle grazing. Okay. That's the temporary electric fence this year. Um, hey, this is all of the like north of that cross fence. Yeah. yeah. So not just two years. We also have the Santa Cruz fire to the north. We'll have to keep them out of there too this year. So we'll probably be having to keep some temporary fence up so we'll keep them out of this and out of fire. Uh, they don't mess with the seedlings too much. But... Unless they lay on them. Sometimes they lay on them. Yeah. <laughs> Question on this straightforward. Um, um, can you bring up the map? Really quickly again. Sorry. So, no one benches, snackling, Spencer Pork, and then. That big piece on the bottom, is that public or private? It's for service and private. Oh, well, it's, it's the, the city. city. Yeah, city. It's private. There's a road going up to the middle of that that's accessible for you. Okay, so it's by the call. Yeah, um, that piece that's up in. Is, is there a grazing agreement or anything there? I don't think yeah, there's that kind of grazing going on there, but so that's just a little uh, part of an area there. Where's the road coast road? Where the road is? It's yeah, yeah, it's the, the, yeah, that's the, the left, that one section. And as you go, as you go further north, to the other treatment area, the uh, this is the tree monster. Well, I thought we're treating this goes all the way along the, the freeway, right? There's stuff clear up at Steel Ranch, and yeah. And is that in the ag field, steel ag field to Steel Ranch? Yeah, north end, yeah. Not by the air vehicle shooting. Yeah, did we ever? I, I know there's been an attempt to either that property had water. And we bought it, we sold the water. We didn't get the water, we bought the property. Yeah. So those, the water's kept on some ponds in the south end of the property there, and it's taken across the highway, across the freeway, two fields on the other side. I think Eric Anderson's looked at a little bit here before. That'd be awesome if we could get some water in there. There's some infrastructure there from what they used to have there, but we don't have any water rights. Water with either their property. Or <laughs> we try. Well, I, that would be right. it, and and we we but definitely yes. operate differently now than we used to. I don't think we knew how hard it was to get an old ag field turned into something valuable. I mean, we it's lessons learned along the way. But I guess my question is, just how much? I I know this has been seeded before, and, and I know it's. And I've, seen, I've planted seedlings in it before. I've seen it. I see it. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I guess what I'm saying is like mm -hmm. without, and I'm not trying to be critical of the project, yeah. without water. Yeah, um, what, what's your return on investment on $121,000 worth of seedlings? Yeah. So that's, we're getting good survival mm -hmm. now with these yeah. seedlings. So we've done, this isn't the first, but we've done four years. And I, I'm going to do a field tour this spring if you have more time seed it. See the survival that we've done. Um, so we, we, we're getting good survival, so I'm confident. The shrubs grow fine. We we bought that property though because it was Doc Steele's farm and it was getting hammered. There was so much depredation on it that that um, it was better to buy it. Better to buy it than it was to pay the, the damages. And so I just we didn't have the juber. In the... <laughs> <laughs> there's there's. There's just a big part of me that would love to see us spend the money to to work on getting water, yeah. and and, yeah. and that's that's a personal philosophy. Mm -hmm. You've got to do a project. When you spend money on water, you're also uh, committing 
time and resources to maintain the water, you know, get it all working. Sure. It's, it's a I lot more than just water. I don't want to farm. I don't want to farm. And we've had mixed results. Yeah, they used to have a lot of elk there, right? Uh, it was both. Yeah, they did have a lot of elk that come up the front, but there were, it, I mean, it, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of deer. There's still a lot of deer. There's still a lot of deer. We call it the wildlife tractor just for that. Yeah. Anyway, okay. Any other questions on this one? So, I mean, if you. If you have a like a baseline number for this, what would it be? I would say give me the money for the shrubs, and I don't care. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so whatever that is, hundred twenty-one four seventy. Definitely for from this group for the show on our better days. I mean, the sportsmen's getting like hundred grand, and they really like your mathematics. Yeah, they got it. They gave a hundred and two thousand. That color not quite. The shrub the shrub purchase is is ninety six. Plus the um, install. And then the install is twenty five. So yeah. Twenty one. What's the what's you the two what what county jewels? Do you remember what's that? That's the work done by me by. Do we need to make any proposed adjustments on this one? Uh, it sounds like it's just about where it needs to be. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Is this, this part going to be added in here as material supplies and all? Or shrub planting? Uh, that part of that cost that we didn't say to plug in? Mad Max. That's your project. Uh, <laughs> you got C cuts in there, right? Mad it's Max cut. C probably it's not probably. just for gas, but Mad Max. C means contractors. Yeah. If you wanted to include the C cut, add another twenty-one thousand. So we need to bump the housing council up to forty. Or two for the sea. That might be part of the. Dude, come on. The other. Yeah, we can't. Yeah. yeah. The partner portion will be running kind of late. So. Well, you can't run the dozer without fuel. Yeah. All right. We'll just, that's what I'll do then. That's the position. So, bump it to 42. 100% big game. Book it. <laughs> Second. <laughs> Can you tell us if it's more or less of this? Yeah, I, I think probably drop it down if that's all my stuff. If it's something the force here is added, maybe we can go to that spot. Okay, we have a motion to approve the bump to have to take down, so I'm out to 42 grand. And that's from Tyler, and we have a second from Cody. Any questions on that? Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Okay, motion passes. All right, almost done. Okay, um, Salt Lake Office 6714 CWR NRTS Farm Bill Biologist. Are you Dan? That is me. So I help oversee our partnership with the NRCS and our Farm Bill Biologist. Maybe, maybe Jacob will want to step out of the room for this. <laughs> but we've had, we've had uh, two of our Biologists here with us today. Um, we have four. We had Stan, we saw quite a bit, and then Jacob, or four of our, or two of our four uh, biologists who are partners with the NRCS. Um, Jacob's based in Ephraim, Stan is in Cedar City, and we have uh, a guy in 
price and we did the brand new money for pro work. And so we use this partnership uh, to um, help the NRCS increase their value of, of for wildlife for having more capacity to do wildlife projects. They only have a state biologist and another biologist who's out on the basin. So this helps them uh, get the wildlife conservation on the ground and helps us access uh, farm bill programs to the federal government and we're able to do wildlife conservation uh, primarily on private ground, but it doesn't have to all be on private ground. We can also use farm bill dollars on um, uh, allotments, federal allotments, and things like that. So Stan has really tapped into that and been able to do a lot of work on public ground. So uh, this is a 50 50 partnership where the NRCS pays 50% and we pay 50%. Um, we'll go to the next one. Uh, yeah, so these guys do a lot of technical assistance. Um, they can the NRCS can't really do outreach. They can't go knock on doors, but our guys, since they're our employees, can go go to private landowners and talk to them, talk to them about what's available for them to do conservation for wildlife. And, and then the kind of the beauty of the program is that we can marry up like like you've seen today, and it's just you know complimented of like oh I love it when somebody's bringing this other money. That's we're bringing the, the farm bill money, and then we try to add in WRI Habitat Council funding to, to make the program a product cool and hopefully we're benefiting uh, wildlife, public wildlife and the, the producer. It's kind of the goal. And so um, these are the different programs that they can tap into the equip the Sage Grouse Initiative, Working Lands for Wildlife, Wetland Reserve, these are all different programs and then uh, utilizing state programs to help make those those programs go. So, um, so this in the, the last fiscal year, um, this is kind of some of the numbers. We had 110 landowners contacted, 157 contracts where we offered technical assistance through WRI. This current fiscal year that we're in right now, um, we have for those are four biologists, we have 40 of six projects where they're either the project manager or a contributor to those projects. So really get a lot of work done with these guys and uh, especially get some work done on, on private land and others. And we also utilize them to help us when we have big fire needs as well. So um, it's been a really successful program, I think, since 2006. And that's, that's kind of the main presentation there, I guess. We, for, we fund our 50% with some of the straight DWR restricted dollars, but then we also historically throw in, yeah, roughly 55,000. Money well spent, in my opinion. So yeah, we um, got money to bring into the... Stan, I was going to say Stan Gurley, um, he's He's been in a position I can't remember now, probably seven, eight years or something like that. So he's got a lot of experience. And then um, Jacob and these guys are been with us for three or four years now. And they're, so it takes a little bit to figure out you know, the whole other language with NRCS. But um, last last couple of years, Stan has been the highest. Uh, he's allocated more money than any other other. NRCS employee in the state, the POPs. It's like, amazing what you can do when you actually get to have permission to go talk to people. Yeah, so it's like over $2 million per year in the POP. And that's, they look Not, at it. This isn't just our own stuff. This no, is, this is all like NRCS staff for the entire state. Power of the list of top dollars allocated. And that's kind of how they look at the success. It's how much money you have to allocate, but it's, it's really, uh, and, and Jacob's got quite a few Questions. So, Danny, as far as the allocations go, 35, 40, 15, 10, is that based on historical achievements? How yeah, um, that? just historically what it's been. I can't remember an analysis of I'm just wondering you know, how much 
with working with landowners, how much time ends up in productive outcome with an eye on big game, up on waterfowl, sport fish? It, it can vary. I think this is just kind of traditionally where we've had it. Somebody wanted to suggest a, a change of probably be okay with that. I don't want to run the boat. It has been going on for years, but I'm having a really hard time believing anybody spends 40% of their time on that one. That probably, when it was put in there, they probably waited to say to for you. Because we have the SGI okay. program, SGI dollars are used a lot. And, so that's, <laughs> and is that still the focus? Um, it's it's a, one of the major funding sources yeah, for them. It's a huge funding source. This sage grass initiative, which they've they've turned it a little bit, so it's not quite so sage grass centric. They call it call it working on for wildlife, and so it's a little bit broader to work on more species. But it's a huge funding source, and we have we actually have two other partner positions that we have protected in another meeting with the with the sage grass initiative program. They're, they're, not, they're housed with Douglas forever, but it is one of the major funding sources with NRCS. But it, is doing a lot of big game work with that money. So that, and then, like this, I said, this has been, I don't even remember who came up with this. Might my question. No, and I can live with it, but Steve, I want to remind you, like, this is where my sage grouse money's going. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't have to do that. I've never touched it. It doesn't look like very much money, Randy, but I mean, I'll take a little bit of that if, if they think it's fair. I don't know. I'm. No, let's let's leave it here. I was joking with you, but it is. I know. I, mean, I know. I, I mean, I, it, when I first, I had forgotten what it was when I looked at it today. And I thought it could be higher, but I'm not going to say more. Give me five to swap over ten percent more or something if you wanted to. But, um, I mean. Well, because the sage grass, if you go back and looked at the money from the sage grass initiative, they yeah. locked up a lot yeah. on this project. Right. So that's so I'm good. That's yeah. where the past benefiting that bringing in that money. Um, that's money we'll spend for a plumber. Somebody want to try motion on this one? I'll motion to approve. I'll second, second it. Okay, motion from Randy. I've got a second from Steve. Take that one. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say no. Okay, motion carries. Go back to the dash stream bridges. Yep. So we've got one go back, uh, one that we skipped earlier. Um, and between Daniel and myself, we will do the previous one out. So um, I'll let you start. <laughs> I think it's the other option, so we can bring to the next meeting and have a line. <laughs> Hill, um, uh, I think we're okay with that. It's right here. And if, if, if the council decides they'd rather hear from our, our our facilities and risk management person about this, that would be fine. But it's 6766 Barbecue Bay and Salt Creek WMA pedestrian bridges. So we've got a lot of old bridges that uh, are on a lot of our WMAs. In the last three or four years, we've been placing a lot of those across. A lot of the maze. This is one that kind of um, probably just started propping up that you know we got a lot of more of these little foot bridges that are over a lot of the dikes and stuff um, on Farmington Bay and Salt Creek. Um, and so this project essentially is just to go in and replace a lot of these structures um, just for access reasons for um, hunters essentially, walk the hunters going in on these properties. Um, well, and the reason it's coming up now and maybe didn't come up earlier or didn't come up last year is our facilities folks have been out there and they're risk people and they're like, you guys have got to start fixing this. And so our director's office got together and said, okay, we've got to start fixing these. And, and so, so this is what we brought for this year. It likely will be an ongoing process. Um, and with the way the water situation is, maybe not even all of these will get done this year. Maybe some of it will get pushed to next year, but uh, it's sort of be up to a certain amount. Um, but uh, it's, a, it's a safety issue. I don't want to say it became a high priority for, from that standpoint, from a risk standpoint, that we start figuring this out. And so that's why we're bringing this to the council now. 
Um, and that's kind of where we're at. So, so these are the three down on Salt Creek that are looking to replace the bridge. Um, two new ones here. This one's a replacement, potentially moving two up here from the north end. Um, this is what some of them look like. It sure is. So, are we going to, with the water that we anticipate coming down, is this going to be enough? No. But is it even, I mean, where they're at, is it going to flood? Can we even get to the point where we can repair and fix them this year? It's a good question. Yeah, we don't know. And so, what this does, though, is if we approve this, it gives us something to work with. <laughs> It's possible to get out there and start doing stuff. I suspect it will be my fault. We'll be able to get that out there and get some of this work done. And depending on what the next winter looks like, you know, the funding goes through in July of next year. So some of that work could happen next year as well. Um, but it very well be, it might be that only half of this gets spent or all of it could get spent. Uh, so, but, um, so with habitat dollars being basically the match to leverage the arts, right? Correct. Um, do we have the ability through other possible match that might not be cash match to leverage PR? We can match the grant. We, we could totally use labor. I mean, that's 70, I mean, this is a hundred percent waterfowl. That is, yeah. this would, yeah, that's, a good that's my, Concern. Yeah, that, that well, a lot. Are we contracting everything? I don't know. They're working yeah. through PFC now to do a lot of the work. Yeah, which means you're gonna. <laughs> and I would imagine that a lot of their time is already much for the PR that's like their wages and other. Yeah, we could count, well, we could count any of our folks as labor. Uh, I mean, working through yeah. the contracting is match. That might, might already be matches, is what Allison's saying, mm -hmm. for other dollars. For so, something else? Yeah. Well, as far as like even just their. Yeah, yeah but this is for fiscal year 24, right? Yeah. Yeah. So when you're, when you're shooting for PR, you can't yeah. count previously done stuff as your match. It's got to be. Not only that, that if, if a lot of these folks' in positions are already PR, PR encumbered, then you can't. Yeah, okay. I was thinking more of all the time. You could probably you could probably count the BFCN pack. Yeah, right. There's, oh. there's for sure. So that would be that would be what I would look at. Um, so you, a you, motion you made fifty thousand, seventy five thousand dollars pretty quickly. Yes. Yeah. At our rates. Is there any way to ask other and I'm not <laughs> hinting at who I work for? I'm like what I mean if we talk to DU or Delta, or can they throw money at this? Probably could. This has come up really last minute. Okay. We've been doing a bunch of stuff down in Ogden Bay, <laughs> Rich. Right. We would commit, <coughs> that's approved as part of the motion, we would commit to look to all of those other potential sources of, of your other groups or other. I think for next for next phase too, we have to look at the infrastructure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, have a great role because any of that that's state money would be matched as well. So yeah, I think what what I would feel comfortable with is uh, and. Just listen, yeah. Manji, if you feel comfortable, this is that this is approved tentatively, understanding that we'll work to find other ways to get the seventy five thousand match. Yeah. We, we, we want to do that for five other Because yes, when we start you get three hundred thousand dollar budget, here's a seventy five thousand dollar hit in mix of bridges. Right. If you're dead in the water, you know, right. you just strip a third of your budget away. I would at least run down that DFCM. Yeah, I'll chat with Brian too. He's the one that's kind of heading up this project. Um, he's kind of our new facility. <coughs> Brian? Brian. And 
I'm sure Brian's not on PR at all. No, right. So the other thing too is, I mean, I know we're required to go through DFCM, but working through a waiver process to see if we can actually contract without their involvement Seriously. would save us a grundle of cash. Because yeah. they build, yeah, they'll, they build yeah. Tiger Tank versions of everything. And <laughs> talking about getting an engineer involved. The seven hundred thousand dollar cabin. It's like, okay, how much was that fire door? Three grand. Awesome. Yeah. Hey, that's a side. That's a side conversation. I know. It's a perfect <laughs> time for side conversation. It's, 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 it is the end of the day. Is the last thing we're gonna gonna review. Will Any this will this go through? Is it ranked high enough to even go through? Well, this is, yeah, this is only half that council. So I mean, I, I think we're at a point where this is probably a need. I guess I mean, I'm not arguing that that's the infrastructure really does need to be done, but I mean, so that and DFCM recognizes that they are expensive and they're more than willing to work with us. So, so try to request some other restricted money as well. They just have to adhere to I've got the OSHA, kind of I guess, well, I guess I put the we both Brian Joe and I both put an enhancement in that enhancement request for this, but we put it in as. PR Habitat Council, but I mean. Let's ask for it as restricted and just see that. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. They'll get weaker. Right? Yeah. I like if you want to do that as a motion, I'll second it. All right, so a motion to, to approve to move forward with the understanding that we'll look to find other qualifying, qualifying sources of matching funds. Second. Okay. Motion from Kobe. You're good. Second from Craig. We will continue to try to offset the funds through other grants and sources. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed say no. All right. Well, Motion okay. to aye. Enhancement process, though, at our next meeting. Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> but, you can, but you can have the discussion before. Yeah. Well, you don't have to have an answer. I would think that <laughs> where it's the bridge PR money that it's going to be. Yeah, we'll, we'll be very much. Yeah. Lots of money. Yeah. 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 13000 that is for the fuel stuff. Under pressure, I did. Not under pressure, I did better. I'm looking at the budget. <laughs> 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 yes. We don't need that. We're just doing the show. Okay. Um, all right, so before we adjourn, our next meeting is the final funding meeting in two weeks, April 19th, starting at 9 a.m. here in this room. Uh, we'll go to maybe 1 p.m. Um, I don't think we have lunch for that meeting, so we'll try to be done by then. I would practice that one. We'll have a habitat management plan for the parallel front to review. Um, any discussion you guys want to have on the spreadsheet? Um, and right now, it's no projects to really present. These were the ones that were on schedule to be presented, and by doing it this way, we won't have to present them. So everything those is, other two four service positions probably could show up. So yeah, I'll, I'll be sending out the how to plan to the yeah. council just review that and we'll have a presentation <laughs> on on that. There might be one other, but I think it'll just be the one. Okay. Any questions? Next next meeting was the nineteenth. Okay. Yes. Only in two weeks. And it's only half a day, Steve. Sounds good. Are you coming in short. I'll come in short. <laughs> I'll come in shorts. <laughs> Let's set it. We'd love to have you here. Let's pray for weather to get all Okay, short. do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Okay, a motion to adjourn from Steve and a second from Kobe, including wearing shorts. <laughs> all in favor say aye. 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 Okay, we are adjourned. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate your help. We're putting good money on down on projects. Good projects. I added. Well, I.